Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron. Welcome back to the bar. A couple of things have changed around here in in, uh, in preparation for the new year coming up, in terms of the holidays coming up. Um, I don't really feel like going over them all. Maybe you can spot them yourself. Anyways, we move on. My name is Cameron. The holidays are coming up, and we did some holiday festivities last week. There was a 24-hour Thanksgiving, or thank, Thankmas. Thankmas. It was a kind of a um, holiday time, Thanksgiving, Christmas fundraiser for the World Central Kitchen last week. It was 24 hours long. We covered a bunch of different cocktails. There was a whole history lesson on the Manhattan. There was a whole exploration and deep dive into Philadelphia Fish House Punch, which I still have an entire picture of in my refrigerator downstairs and will eventually get through. Um, and, and there was a couple of other things that we wound up covering as well. Last week I prepared for like a lot of different cocktails and I didn't actually get through through most of them so we figured you know what you know the Christmas time is coming up the um the Hanukkah time I believe is coming up I think Hanukkah this year is the is in January I think or it lasts into January I don't actually Alexa when is Hanukkah this year I can ask these questions that's wonderful Alexa what are the dates of Hanukkah this year Monday, December 26th. We're getting close. What is up, bitches? Says Dom Star. I'm the bitch here. I'm the one bitch so far. There are no other bitches in the apartment, at least. Except for the two little bitches on my scarf. Um, it was a gift from my grandmother. Um, and they're Christmas trees. So, you know, Christmas tre trees can be bitches, so to speak. Um, but yeah, so, uh, there, you, know, you know, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, other holiday things. There are so many other holidays out there that I'm not even remotely aware of. I was raised predominantly Christian, Catholic. And so, if there's any sort of gap in my knowledge of uh, other holidays that happen around the wintertime season or things that are kind of in celebration of family, you know, th fam familiarity, uh, bloodlines, friendship, companionship, gift giving, and whatever, um, please educate me. I don't know these things. I was raised differently than a lot of other people, I'm sure, but maybe the majority, I, I don't really know. Anyway, I don't need to get into the politics of it all. We're making some cocktails tonight. And um, some ones that I really, really wanted to explore. So I think I'm going to get started for that. One thing that I will note out uh, first is I, I kind of, I'm a little out of breath I don't know if I've completely prepared everything for the stream because for the last hour or so I was having a whale of a time modifying the discord I'm sorry modifying the bot that I use for chat commands and stuff and I added a recipe command and it makes things so much easier for me and I'm so happy about I'm a technical kind of guy so I'm gonna kind of vamp on the fact that I'm super happy, man. I don't have to retype recipes and stuff. Go straight to a Discord log. Gives me the time, the recipes, and everything. And we just go through it. All it will, the only thing that will require is a little bit more patience on my end as I type in recipes. But it makes it easy, too, because now everybody knows what the recipe is, and I don't have to say it all the time. You can just type exclamation point recipe in chat, and it'll pop right up if I've said it correctly. Now, if I haven't said it correctly, somebody needs to check me on that, because I am the only person who does that. Maybe one, maybe one day we'll get some more mods in here to be able to help me out with that. In any case, we get things started. I need to grab myself a coaster for my water cup over here because um, I tend to not do that. These, I really like these coasters here, but they get like oddly bent and stuff. And ben bendy coasters are not very really, really good because then my, my drink like flops over. As, as I drink more of my drink, it starts to like not be as much weighed down. So then like, I don't know if the drink is gonna fall over. It's just incredible. In any case, the first recipe that I'm going to cover today is what's called a mold French 75. A French 75 cocktail usually uses, I have to remember what an original French 75 uses. I have to Google that because I apparently don't have that. Or actually, maybe I already have it in my recipes. French, 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 French people. I love French people. I like most people too. French 75s are usually made with, I think it's like, I think it's Cren no, that's a Cure Royale. I'm thinking of the one that creme de cassis in it. I'm not so sure. According to the internet, French 75 cocktail recipe from, it doesn't actually say on the Google page, but it's made with gin, champagne, lemon juice, and sugar. The only difference is we're using a bit of pomegranate juice and Prosecco. I have Prosecco. Do I have Prosecco left? I really hope I have Prosecco left. If not, we're going to use champagne. Uh, and we have to make this mold simple syrup. Mold simple syrup is something that we're going to make first. That's the, technically the first recipe because it's a whole involved process and it involves my indu induction cooker, so we're going to go for it. Dom says, my statement remains on being a mod if you want. To be honest, I completely forgot that offer stands. Let's make it happen. Can I do that from here? Mod? Is that a thing? Can I do that? Mod? 
Dom Star. You're a very important character here, so I, I grant I grant this upon you. I don't know if that worked. I don't know if that worked. Well, if it did, cool. Oh my god, it's, there's a little mod thing. Welcome. Now inaugurating the second or third mod that I have on this channel. I had to remove one of them because they're a bit of a bitch. But we're good. Guess we'll find out. Here we go. Awesome. Um, I don't have any documentation on how this command works. Um, only I know. So, um, if dicks pop in chat, let's, let's slice them off. The mold simple syrup recipe calls for a variety of different things that is basically all more or less bold, mo boiled and combined into, an, a, into a, a stove pot with water. It uses water, it uses sugar, it uses ginger, it uses cinnamon, it uses nutmeg, it uses cloves, it uses cardamom, it uses star anise, it still uses orange peels and orange bitter. Now that is suffice to say that it is just one particular recipe of some sort of sugar with mold spices in it. You could take these spices as well and instead of putting sugar into it, and water you could put wine into it too like a red wine and make yourself a nice mold wine it's a it's a very very warm libation to have especially around like the holiday season here kind of warms up the tummy warms up the brain warms up the i guess the social the, the social activity that occurs between the people who are all drinking because you put like a bottle or two of wine or even more in there with a bunch of stuff as well so it's um it works this recipe calls on a base of a single cup of water matched to equal part equal parts of sugar um i'm gonna set up my induction cooker here for a moment uh gonna get my measuring stuff up and let me just begin with some mold simple syrup to go into eventually a mold french 75. i gotta go down here and go get my induction cooker so you'll give me a little bit of couple of moments for setup and stuff um if all goes according to plan this will not be the only time i use this induction cooker on stream today just gotta do a little bit of little, little bit of cleanup a little bit of cleanup indeed a little bit of preparation and stuff I think, as I've kind of mentioned before, um, I think this was a, I think this was a last week Cameron comment about how I think I usually go way too fast on these streams and like it almost feels like a marathon to me. I'm like, oh my god, like I gotta get through all seven of my cocktails in two and a half hours. This is not actually a bar that serves up to anywhere between a couple dozen to about a couple hundred patrons per hour. I don't do things like that. I wouldn't consider myself much of a professional in these contexts mostly just a hobbyist and as that being the case i'm not gonna rush through things if we're trying to look for quick and fast recipes that's what watching the vods are for because all the recipes are in the descriptions and that's what popping in the discord is for because all the recipes wind up there too i say that which is kind of a lie right now because i think last week's cocktails haven't made it to the discord yet and neither have the week before i know that i'm catching up on it it's been a very it's been a very busy kind of couple of weeks or so they will appear eventually i promise that so i have my induction cooker here and this thing gets really really hot really really fast so what i'm going to do first i'm just going to kind of add everything in here except for the sugar i'm going to try to add the things that kind of float and exist separate from the water itself um and then i'll start cranking up the heat because it, it heats up pretty fast i think when you're making syrups and whatnot you want to kind of you don't really want to rush the process of boiling this is a live cooking show live cocktail show so the i think there's a little bit it's going to be a little bit lost because i want to get through things a little bit faster there um but but you know you you, you do what you can you do what you can um we're gonna need a cup of water uh i have a measuring cup around here somewhere it is down beneath my foot on my right hand side which looks to be your, the left hand side from everybody else's perspective and i'm gonna fill up about a cup of this i don't know what the um the exact measurements are of the um of the pot that i have here it might hold more than a cup it probably does does it use a lot that doesn't really fill up much at all I'm kind of tempted to put more cup in there. No, I mean, eh, I don't. I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. What winds up happening? You know, no, no, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it anyway. There's, a, there's, there's room for more liquid in here. I'll do two cups. I'll double the recipe. Um, we'll see if I need to do that. Actually, I'm usually against like making large amounts of, of like mixer like this because they wind up going bad faster than I can wind up using them. But I'm pretty sure that I'll be to. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to use this. Actually, recently I started. Uh, I tried making myself like an authentic like like um, cup of Starbucks coffee. The Starbucks iced coffee the other day. Excuse me, I'm getting one of my towels. Um, and it came out really, really well. I didn't realize that it was so simple to make one of those. BRB says Dom, switch it to the PC now. Oh man, dude's gotta take the throne. 
that's proper a proper uh, piloting seat for this new power that Dom now wields. Um, and what was I saying? I made myself. I tried to make myself like a do-it-yourself like Starbucks iced coffee recipe the other day. I was I was having a hard time working from home. I was. Uh, it's been difficult making some progress recently. Just a lot of. Just Roblox and stuff, but we'll get past it eventually. We keep a smile on our face and stay motivated. Um, next, I'm going to add, or I'm going to add the two cups of sugar at the end. Uh, but next, we'll start adding in other ingredients. The next ingredient that I'm going to add is, it used to be a quarter of a teaspoon. Now it's half of a teaspoon of ginger. I don't have a teaspoon up here, so I'm going to try to measure this in milliliters. Alexa, volume eight, please. Alexa, what is half a teaspoon in milliliters? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, half a teaspoon is 2.46 milliliters. Two point source. That's all. I don't know. I'm just going to eyeball it. It doesn't need too much ginger in there. I've got ginger over here. Ginger is something that I would highly recommend to anybody who suffers from uh, issues kind of like me with a, like, a sort of a overactive gastrointestinal system um it's soothing it's soothing to the body it's soothing to the acid and i used to do a lot of i used to do a lot of ginger tea as a means to kind of calm my body down and it pretty much worked just as well as some of the probiotics or uh, prescription medications that i use to kind of de-acidify my body um usually what i do is i kind of take the ginger if i'm trying to do a lot of it i just kind of take the ginger and i kind of scrape at it with a spoon to get the skin off of there because i don't really want the skin in this case i'm not going to be super duper careful with it this this ginger's kind of been sitting around for a little bit i think uh, my fiance has been using it for ginger tea as well i've kind of fallen out of my ginger tea habit um recently um so this ginger isn't exactly fresh i'm gonna grab let me see if i got any spoons over here to make this job easy on myself no guess we're, guess we're, guess we're being hard on that i was wondering where my bucket is where's my bucket at i had a bucket i put my bucket Damn, I don't know where my bucket is. That's uh, okay. I don't. I don't need my bucket. We back. We're here. Um. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of like shave this off. I'm gonna do this. I don't think there's any need to watch this. I am going to take and shave the bottom of this ginger. And when I get back, I'm gonna grate it into the. I'm gonna grate it into the the pan. Not super. Not super difficult. I assure you, I'm still here, and I'm just savoring this ginger off screen. Um, because I don't have my bucket with me. Otherwise, I would just shave it right into, uh, whatever we were working on. This is also a very, very ugly piece of ginger, now that I think about it. I guess that is kind of worth seeing. This is a very ugly piece of ginger. I don't, I don't like this ginger. Not a big tea person, says Dom. I really, I will, for the longest time, I also wasn't a tea person. I just did not appreciate, uh, the fact that there are so many different types of tea. That it's kind of like saying you're not a beer person, but you don't drink, like, you don't exactly know, like, what beers are your thing or not. I eventually came around to realizing that I am a bit of a tea person, but there's particular types of teas that I enjoy. I particularly like smoky types of teas, like a laps and Sichang, ones that are a little more, I guess, kind of fruiter, fruitier forward, citrusy forward, kind of like a um, like an Earl Grey tea, I believe is. Oh no 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 no, it's not Earl Grey. Um, oh my gosh, what is it? I love Earl Grey tea. I don't exactly know what's in Earl Grey tea, but I like Earl Grey tea. Um, I don't know what it is about Earl Grey tea. I think I was thinking bergamot infused tea, which I'm pretty sure is like English breakfast. And I've never had a bergamot before, but I think it's some sort of citrus fruit. Take your ginger, shave a little bit in there, and again, I'm gonna get my shaver. For for a while, I could not find <laughs> the cheese grater. I looked all around on. So I really should get something other than a cheese grater because this thing has been used for a lot of things. Um, and I really should get something else. Um, but I couldn't find the cheese grater. I went looking all around the kitchen for it, and I had stolen it. It's up here. Um, you're trying to go for about half a teaspoon. I'm eyeballing it. Just just put however much you want into there. Ginger can be very very potent. It's very very tasty. It's got a nice spice to it. That ginger has personality though. It does. It's kind of got that kind of like um kind of pale emo kid vibe a little little flexible little this is this is oh this is actually kind of working there's a lot of it <coughs> appearing on the other side i will scoop it all off and um that's probably all the ginger that i need so um that's great that's wonderful i'm gonna take my ginger and put it elsewhere this is a very nasty looking ginger it's still ginger it smells so fragrant i i one of the things that i love about ginger is the fragrance of it all it almost smells like lemon zest but it's got a it's got a i'd say it's got a spicy note to it which you might, might not understand unless you've actually put your tongue up to a piece of ginger it is it's spicy it burns your tongue but i think in the best of ways i'll just put this i'll put this over here i will clean these up i will put it under the christmas tree for a a further camera to be like ooh, I should put that in my body again 
I'm gonna just kind of more carefully kind of take the the non-sharp side of the grater try to get as much of that ginger off as possible kind of mix it up a little bit because why not why not I will be using this again um, for one of the other ingredients coming up the next one that I'll add is two cinnamon sticks. You could also add, in this case, so I'm doubling things up a little bit, so you could use four cinnamon sticks. Cinnamon is also, it's pretty intense. Like, for the amount of stuff that's going into here, I don't exactly know where the ratios come from. I don't know if the ginger is going to be super duper intense. I don't know if the, the cinnamon is supposed to be most intense. Um, I'm actually going to go around, like, three cinnamon sticks or about... I guess in this case, three quarters of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon if you want to do something equivalent. Because um, I got some pretty good big cinnamon sticks. I might actually just use two of them because they are the big boys. I just gotta find them. Where my big boy? Oh, there you are. And they're my big boy cinnamon sticks. If anybody out there has ever had Ceylon cinnamon sticks, C Y L O N, I believe it's an area somewhere on the other hemisphere of the world. I don't know which uh, which country specifically. Might be might be India. Ceylon might be in India. Alexa, where is Ceylon? I found a few hair salons. No. Salon. Alexa, stop. Alexa, Salon. stop. Miles Alexa, miles stop. Miles. She's so loud. Alexa, volume six. I don't know if that worked or not. I've been trying to use a little more of the help. It's so easy to ask questions. Alexa could be a little stupid at times, but that's okay. Salon is... A place? Salon cinnamon? Comes from the bark of cinnamon trees from Southeast Asia. That's that's specific. Salon cinnamon? I want Salon the location. It's in Sri Lanka! That's where it is. Salon is in Sri Lanka. I know I know that now. In any case, these are some these are some pretty beefy boys. And they have it's just such an excellent they have an excellent aroma to them. They have an excellent taste to them. I've actually taken one of these and I've just straight up bitten into them because they're just they kind of fall apart a little bit. It's actually it's actually really good. It's really, really good. And I'm sure they taste even better if you brown them up. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the full cinnamon sticks because it's just it's just the easier thing to do. The next spice that we're adding to our mulling spice simple syrup is um, nutmeg. My name's a nutmeg. I have nutmeg. It is solid. I'm going to take the grater out again. And we're going to grate some nutmeg on top of it. Nothing quite like fresh nutmeg. When I went to the store for the first time, like over a year ago to get this nutmeg, I didn't realize that it actually came in the form of literally a nut. <laughs> it's funny. This thing is legitimately a nut. I just noticed my, um, where's my remote control? My remote control is on my desk. This time and this time only, I'm just gonna approach the camera, otherwise I'd use my cool little zoom function. Um, let's turn on, let's turn on the lighter still over here. Hi everybody, this is me slouching. It's okay. Desk lamp is blue. That's not the right color. That is not the right color. There we go. White. There we go. That still doesn't work. Just kidding. I, I thought that was going to work. Very sick drawing on the board behind you. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I'm a pretend drawer. I just have really good references that I use. Anyway, this is nutmeg. If anybody is curious, this is nutmeg. It's going gonna, it's gonna to zoom in somewhere. It, this, this zoom gets very powerful. Take a closer look at that nutmeg. Take a... Take a Nice old look at that nutmeg. Are you focusing well? Yes! Focus upon the nutmeg! One of the things that I changed about this stream is my camera is actually a lot higher than it used to be um, so that I can actually angle down at my bar. Oddly enough, so previously I realized the angle of my camera was like straight on so you couldn't see the top of the bar at all. And I realized that last week and I was like, we can, we can make that better. And so now we can actually see the surface of the bar. It's so great. You can see it has depth. And that if I, if I sprawled across it, you would know. I think it'll give a better view of the cocktails. We'll see. Eventually, I'll just get another camera for it, but the camera I use now is, is fancy. So we need about, let's see, like half a teaspoon. I don't know. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to use measurement of the eye, the ball of my eye. Just kind of just kind of do with this with it. This is a very... Nutmeg can be ready, pretty rough. Um, you, I kind of use a little bit of force. You don't really want to use too much force because you could very well grate your finger. I have done that before. It is not pleasant. I've also, when I was practicing peeling a citrus for the first time, like a year or so ago, I peeled my knuckle off with a peeler and got a little bit of blood in my cocktail. I was the one drinking it, so it's okay, but not a habit that I'd like to keep. The next ingredient that I'll add and the next mulling spice will be some cloves. This recipe calls for 12 whole cloves. I'm doubling it. I could put 24 whole cloves in there, but cloves to me are a very, very, very powerful flavor. So instead, I'm gonna take a handful of cloves and um, if it seems like too much, all right. If it seems like just enough, all right. We're just gonna go with it. I'm gonna bring my sugar over here preemptively because it looks like it was kind of kind of tilting over over there. Let's do a handful, handful of sour cloves. I see 
and a mountain there. I'm gonna drop that in. I don't really, I don't really feel like counting. I'm actually, I'm really, really bad. I think previously in my life, I used to be really, really good at like mathematics and stuff. Mental math used to be like my thing. And now I can barely gauge distance anymore. Like if you were to ask me, oh, about how long is your bar? I don't know. If I'm like five foot six, then I guess my bar is like five foot four, I guess. It's like my arm span. And I think important at that like Da Vinci diagram, I think it's also about five foot six or about 50, 58 to 60 inches, I think. Dom says, grade your finger with the alphabet, not a cheese grater. Indeed, indeed. Great and greater. Greed, greed versus great. I did a great job not skinning my finger this time around, and it was wonderful. The next clo the next spice that we're gonna add is cardamom pods, pods and also star star anise, star anise. I don't exactly know how to pronounce that word. A N I S E pods. Uh, yeah. Let's go for that. I got a little bit of those. I grabbed some cardamom pops for a recipe that basically just infused it with coffee. That was actually really, really good. I was not expecting it to taste as good as that actually did. Um, and I think I've had the, um, I've had the star in this for quite a while now, actually. This is cardamom. I've got star in this up here. The NSC that I got was from, I think it was a Renaissance fair once upon a time. Uh, it says, I got it from Wellcat Herbs, and they're, they're, they're tiny little things. They're cute little things. I need one to two cardamom pods and three or four star anise pods. Star anise, star anise, I don't know. And these guys are really, really tiny, these, uh, these cardamom, these whole cardamoms. So when they say a cardamom pod, I imagine that the pod itself is bigger than the individual like granules on the inside. Um, so actually, we can we can do some research because we're not trying to rush through these things. We're gonna do this correctly. A cardamom pod has about how many cardamom seeds in it? Cardamom pod seed count. Because I think what I have here are seeds. I've got my diffuser blowing, says Dom, blowing some lavender oil. So they're hoping to relax and just fall asleep soonish. I love the smell of, like diffusing scents and stuff. Anna's very very sensitive to smells and stuff, so we can't really have it in our house, but. Eh. I like to do it when I'm alone. Uh, I've been alone. Anna's at home. She's taking advantage of her break. So a cardamom pod has 8 to 16 seeds in it. So I think just like I did for the other one, I'm just going to take a handful of cardamom. Whoa, that's a big old handful. I'll just drop it in. I think that'll be pretty good. I'm going to do what else. What if it's like millions of seeds? <laughs> um, but luckily it's not. Cardamom has like a very like... um like a woodsy smell to me. It's almost like a, a like um like a black walnut, but the skin of the black walnut, uh, it's reminiscent of kind of my home area. They got a lot of black, they're actually green when they fall off the trees. They turn black eventually, and they make an excellent liqueur called Nochino, which is great. So I threw it on the ground. Happy birthday, cardamom ground. It's, it's now covered in cardamom. Um, it also says how many, how many anis? Three to four star anise pods. And now the question is, how many star anise pod, how many uh, uh, seeds come in a star anise pod? Star anise pod seed count. About how many? Six to eight points each containing a seed. So I am to think that it's six to eight per pod. And if there's three to four pods, which should be doubled to about eight, I think it's also safe to say I'll add about a handful. Some things are a really exact science. I think when it comes to particular cocktails, especially like the, the shorter ones or the more complex ones with a lot of ingredients, I think it's pretty important to like measure things out. For this, nobody's gonna know this. I think we'll be just fine. All right, I'm gonna put a little, I got a bit of a handful. There we go, gonna sprinkle that on top. I saw a video the other day of somebody saying, oh, the reason why we chefs sprinkle our salt from above is because it more evenly distributes the granules of salt in the little areas as opposed to when you do it closer. Um, and they did like a really, they did it like on camera. It didn't really look like a very exact science to me either. Um, I think it just looks cool though. This is very sharp. This is very sharp plastic. I kind of, I may have just cut myself with this plastic. That is insane. Dom debated on drinking tonight. I wish he had now. No one will notice. Nobody noticed. Nobody noticed. If drinking is conducive for you relaxing, pop a squat, grab something nice, put it a little over ice. If you had anything in your collection, I would try to make anything in your collection. I would try to make recommendations as if I knew what I was talking about, which I sometimes do, as we discussed last week. It's all about confidence. If you got confidence, everyone will believe you. In any case, me every day of his life at FedEx with weird boxes. They have no collection right now. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't work for the logistics industry. Although I do pack things up every once in a while at work, but that has not been, that's not my job recently. 
I'm doing more important things. So now that we've added all of our spicy components, we're gonna add two orange peels or four orange peels. I'm gonna take an orange, I'm gonna get some peels off of it. And then we added some drops of, of um, orange bitters in there. I think what I'll do is as the peeling the orange and the orange bitter stuff is very, very easy. So I'm gonna get a couple oranges, I'm gonna grab my peeler out, and we're gonna start combining the sugar as I'm peeling these orange peels over here to kind of get things moving a little bit more. And I think I will be able to remember that other part of the recipe. So let's go down and grab me some oranges. I had like very particular oranges from last week that I wanted to use the peels of, and I don't remember which ones they were. Oh, I got a thumb! Excellent. I picked out two. When I use the peels of oranges, I like to go organic because, you know, usually usually if you've got like a thick peel on a, on a fruit, you don't necessarily need to worry too much about whether it's organic or not and pesticides and stuff because the peel itself does a really good job of blocking out most of it. But like if you're going to use the peel, then if there's like wax sprayed on them or pesticide and stuff, then you might as well get the like the organic ones because I, I don't know. I don't know if there's any proof of that. Uh, I haven't looked at any particular things like outlining like a very specific set of numbers that prove yay or nay about it and rejecting a null hypothesis. However, feels good. Feels very good. So what I'm going to need to do is as I heat this thing up, I need to add two cups of my sugar. I got a bunch from last week, so I think we'll be okay. Do I have two cups left in here? I'm pro I probably do. This is an obscene amount of sugar. It's gonna taste absolutely freaking amazing. I think I, I'm really looking forward to this particular simple syrup. It's not quite a simple syrup. It's a complex syrup, if we had to be honest. Dom says, do what makes you feel comfortable with your food. Personally, when I'm eating black olives or olives in general, I like to put them on my fingers and pretend I'm an olive monster and then pop them in my mouth one at a time. Um, does it make me feel comfortable? Yes. Does it make everyone else feel uncomfortable? Two can be true. All right, let's turn this thing on. So I have an induction cooker here. Um, in order to use the induction cooker, you kind of have to have a thing that's all metal, and this is the only one that is all metal in my apartment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn it on. Function mode to, uh, I can't really see from here. Let me see, I'm gonna lean over real precariously. Let's see. That looks like a nine. Looks like a six. I don't know. We're going to go for it. I don't know exactly which one that is, but we're going to try it. The way the shadow is on the orange, it looks like an orange tennis ball. Ooh. It kind of looks a little tennis ball-y, all things considered. I'm going to take the sticker off of these oranges, because um, that's a smart idea. Um, I don't know if the fan gets picked up by the microphone. That's that's not quite something I've figured out how to, how to figure out yet and be able to cope around. But uh, like most things, the stream is always improving over time, just like this beautiful new camera angle and the new bot command. I'm so happy about it. Somebody should just type exclamation point recipe just so I can show it off. It'd be greatly appreciated. All right, so I can see little bubbles popping in at the bottom over here. I'm gonna try to make sure I get some of those seeds that have floated to the bottom, like just up and around. I don't wanna, I don't wanna get them like burned and stuff. I have, I only have a muddling stick that I can use for this, so I'm gonna do that. Should also probably put a towel down over here so I'm not making a mess. There we go. It smells great so far. Recipe, look at it, it's beautiful. <laughs> it has the whole recipe right here. Now, if you're particular uh, and wanna get out of here quickly, this is the recipe. It's gonna take us probably the next 10 minutes to get it done, so it'll be great. That's what my job is for, there we go. Well, actually, everybody can use the recipe command. Only us can use set recipe, add ingredient, clear recipe, um, which will either wipe or add to or completely overwrite things. Uh, we'll, we'll get used to it. It's new for me too, so. I'm gonna start adding some sugar to this, naturally. I put a little thing in there, give it a little bit of a stir. I can see uh, things starting to form. I'll also do double task, and I'll get my peeler, and I'll put some, uh, I'll put some orange peels in there. I need four, supposedly. Let's see how nice of a peel I can get. That is a nice looking peel. My goodness. Maybe it's not the nicest looking peel, but it's a pretty long peel, and I'm very happy with that. That's one peel. Let's get another one. Another peel, you say? Another peel indeed. And we were kind of discussing last week, too, when I had my buddy Eric on about, like, the particular, like, when you peel something, you don't necessarily want all the pith in it. You want all the good stuff that's beyond the pith, and certainly not kind of going into the flesh of the orange either. Um, I'm not super good at this. Uh, but I'm still practicing, so we will continue with it. I kind of had like two and a half peels in there, so I'm going to go to the other orange, give things a little bit of a stir, and check out what's going on over here. I know some people have a bot that sent their list of commands like every 10 minutes or something like that. I like to keep it down in the about section, just because like, I don't really feel the need to like spam chat with commands and stuff. If there are any like, 
really pertinent commands. They'll probably be in the title, or at least so I've seen. And if there's anything that you can just like use on the regular, they're down in the about section of, of Twitch. And there's a couple of them in there. I try to make things fun around here. There's no pressure to use them. I just add them for convenience, like the lurk command. And it's cool too. So if anybody's interested in the way that I do bots, I use a program, I use a, a program? Not really a program. Yeah, I guess a program. I use something called Cruise Control with a K, and it's an open source um, chatbot that actually runs in OBS itself. And you can pretty much completely customize what it does. It's like, I guess it's probably like um, Nightbot or Streambot or whatever, um, but I think it's cooler because it's something that I can code myself, and it's awesome. I need some more sugar in there. Let's go for it. The water has gotten significantly hotter than it was before. You can actually kind of see the fact that there is now steam coming off of everything. We also need four dashes of orange bitters as I get the rest of the sugar kind of um, calm and collected together in here. Got to make sure it all dissolves as best as possible. I'm going to put these oranges away back into the citrus bag. Oh, no, don't roll away, orange. Thank you. Thank you for not rolling away, orange. I'm going to get some orange bitters. This is a... I intend on this being a nice... A nice concoction, a nice set of syrup. So I'm gonna take the bitter truth bitters and put four dashes of that in there because this is this is some fine stuff. One, two, three, four, and we're doubling it. So five, six, seven, eight. Smells pretty good. Of the whiffs that I'm catching from it, I remember, I remember in my middle school biology class, you waft the smell. Oh my god, that is amazing. That is such a spicy smell. Uh, I, it's kind of bubbling a little bit, getting a little tumultuous in there. Tumultuous waters. It's going. More sugar. More sugar, he says! Put some more stuff in there! It's getting more and more syrupy by the moment. And it's got such a nut. Honestly, I don't know if it's gonna be. I don't know if changing up the ingredients would have helped or detracted from this. I'm just taking a recipe from online. Actually, where did I get this recipe? That's probably something important. I'll add that to the bot command too of like links of where I got the recipes from so you can find some of your own as well. I got this one from Crafted Pour. Oh, no kidding. Awesome. If anybody else makes cocktails out there and you want to get paid for it, go to Crafted Pour. You get considered, or you get um, paid for your contributions and stuff depending on how popular it is. Hey, says Dom. Dom asks, what information would you never put on a social media site? <laughs> My social security number. Um, unless I specifically put a fake social security number on there, then I guess it leads people on and it makes people think like, oh my god, this guy's an idiot. No, you're the idiot for thinking that I was the idiot. I double played you. Um, but maybe the fact that I put a fake social security number on the, on the website implies that maybe I was actually planning on giving some sort of information and that there is a more logical, like probabilistically higher chance that the number that I put on the website is closer to my actual social security number than if I were to put a bunch of random numbers on there. I don't really know. Math is scary. I would definitely not put my social security number on, on a website. Um, if, and also, I guess, if pictures of my naked body is also considered information, I probably wouldn't put that on the internet either unless I was raising money for something and knew exactly what I was doing. And I would say, for the most part, I have no idea what I'm doing. And that's speaking confidently. I'm confident in that fact. I definitely don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just following a recipe. The new mark, wink, wink, dude. <laughs> I was so curious. I was like, do I do I look at Markiplier's OnlyFans? I was like, no. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put, turn that off. I think all of the sugar is pretty much pretty much in there. I don't think I'm just gonna let this cool. I'm gonna let it cool for a little while. What I'm gonna want to wind up doing is I'm gonna put it on the table over there to cool off as we prepare the other ingredients for the next recipe, which we'll come, have coming up here in just a little bit. He crashed OnlyFans too, dude. Markiplier is just a quick vamp on Markiplier. I love that man. He popped into my life because my younger brother showed him, uh, started watching him, I think, in, like, middle school and stuff, and it brought, it kind of helped him through a really hard time in his life, and I didn't really understand it at the time. I was like, I don't understand how a person playing video games, like, helps you through, like, bad times in your life. And then I started watching things, I started watching his videos myself, he's just such a feel-good guy. He's got an awesome voice, he looks pretty good, too, and he's just, in general, just a very positive individual, and he does so much good for the world with the endowment that he has just because of the, like, the success that he's had on YouTube. If that, if there is a sufficient role model out there, there, I would say it's Markiplier. Like, like, no cap. That is, if there's anybody to look up to, I would definitely say Mark Edward Fishback. What a guy. 
like it as soon as it went live only flames was like totally dead it's totally true so i have um i'll remind once again what i made just now is some mold simple syrup and essentially the idea is you're taking simple syrup and putting a bunch of molding spices in it we've got star anise in there we've got clove in there we've got orange bitters in there we got orange peel in there we've got cinnamon in there we've got cardamom in there we've got oh my god what else i said clove there's clove in there ginger it's just like pretty much anything you want to can go into this spice and you can call it a mold simple syrup this is just the recipe i found and it was by who on crafted pour i can click on my link to find out it was shared by a mixologist called my page is loading over here stan Bissell on crafted pour and what a wonderful what a wonderful stan he be Thank you, Stan, for this wonderful recipe. I'm going to take this off to the side, and um, we'll be back to start with another... We'll use this in the next recipe, coming up in a hot second. So please excuse me. I hope I have the right thing to put on the table over here. Oh, I really don't. Oh, I don't have... <clears throat> what is it? Oh, I found it! Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm just over here talking to myself off camera for a hot, for a hot moment. I gotta move this gourd out of the way. Gotta, gotta move these pennies out of the way. Gotta move this amiibo out of the way. Put that there. Put my put my tahini sauce back. There we go. A little crazy what happens off stream. I'm gonna put it on one of these things because I don't want to burn my surfaces. Kind of makes sense. And I don't have enough space in the bar, so I'm going over here. I'm gonna move this Amazon box and put it on the table. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. No, 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 no. no. Okay, well. I kind of dropped it. It's not all bad. It's fine. It only had metal cans in it that have pressurized liquid on the inside. Everything is going to be just fine. Trust me. I'm also going to take this this induction cooker, checking to make sure it's not super duper hot on the sides. I'm going to place it on, I'd say, on the floor. If you are aware, of, if you have people in your apartment, don't do this. If you're not acutely aware of everything happening around you, don't do this. I'm putting this on the floor right within my stepping area. I know that I shouldn't step on the induction cooker, but not everybody does. Actually, once upon a time, Anna was coming back here to try to help me out with stuff, and it, I love it when she does, but I had like a full cocktail shaker on the on the floor, and that was precarious on my part. That, that was totally my bad, that I decided to keep a full cocktail, used cocktail shaker on the ground. And she came in, she just spilled it over the floor. I was like, oh no, I was like, you shouldn't have done that. She's like, you shouldn't have left it on the floor. You're right. I really shouldn't have. That was totally on me. Put my used equipment off to the side because I don't have my bucket this time. I think this is actually better. More space behind microphone for more of the tools so that it don't make a mess. And I can easily access my knife again and not have to go into the into the container that may hold anywhere between, you know, any water or dot or whatever. It doesn't even matter. Use tools over there. So the next thing that we're going to do... We're going, to, we're going to create the rest of the molds French 75, which came from Stan Bissell from Crafted Pour. Um, we need a couple different ingredients in there, and what I'm going to do as a means to prep for that is I am going to put it in the chat. I'm going to do a couple of things here to make sure that I get everything all up there correctly. Move that over to the side. I'm going to put this over here. Can I see things properly? I can. Don't, this is don't step on the induction plate. Proceeds to stare at the induction plate seductively. That thing's giving me the bedroom eye. Not eyes, only a single eye in this case. Incredible. So what I'm gonna do is, I need this Discord bot. Export recipe. I should have received a message in a Discord server somewhere. Probably, I can only hope so. Uh, reset recipe. Maybe it's clear recipe. It might be reset recipe or clear recipe. Not so sure. Did that work? There is currently no set recipe, epic. I'm gonna be finagling with this with a hot minute. It's for everybody's reference, I assure you. So the next recipe we're gonna do, set recipe, is the mold French 75. I'm gonna add a couple ingredients here. The first ingredient is going to be one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of gin. Oh no, I did the command wrong. Oh no, I'm still getting used to things myself. Add ingredient. Single ingredient. If I put ingredients, it doesn't work. Chat's gonna be spammed for a minute. It's all on me. I will eventually fix this, maybe. Add ingredient. We will also need a half an ounce, or about 15 milliliters, of pomegranate juice. There we go. Add another ingredient. You're gonna also need about half an ounce, 
15 milliliters of lemon juice. I'm gonna get mine freshly squeezed because that seems appropriate. Dom says, this part's kind of cool in, in his opinion, seeing things get made in the moment, even the recipe. I'm so glad I'm not the only one that's hyped up about this. This is awesome. And then the future, so I have this enabled so that the mods can do this too. So if I, like, maybe, maybe this things get a little more streamlined in the future. I don't know. I don't want to like specifically rely on any particular people. I don't want everybody, like, I don't want anybody else like stressing out for the sake of keeping the stream going. But maybe once upon, maybe sometime in the future, things will kind of be streamlined like that. The next ingredient that we'll need in here is a half an ounce of our Mold Simple Syrup, which is sitting over on my counter, cooling off a little bit. That's about 15 milliliters of that. Mold Simple Syrup. I'll put a little asterisk there, because like, that, that means that there was a recipe elsewhere. Uh, how much do we have left? Oh my God, so much typing. I'll make this easier on myself. We need two ounces, uh, or about 60 milliliters of Prosecco, Champagne. I'll put both of them there, because I don't know which one I had available. 60 milliliters of champagne, prosecco, sparkling wine, and then we'll add the. I can add the uh, the garnish there too. Add the ingredient. Perhaps it will become better as the kids call it the day. <laughs> perhaps see, perhaps see it will become better as the kids call it these days. Um, add ingredient. Uh, garnish with a. Rosemary sprig. Eh. I'm down with that. That should work. Did that work? Do we have the whole recipe? Mm, yeah, we do. Oh, it's epic. Uh, this also makes... I realize by me spamming chat, it makes it hard to see everybody else's message. But I didn't miss anything. That is, that is an unintended consequence. Let's move on and make a mold French 75 with the recipe that we have now beautifully displayed in chat and right in front of my face. Um, to do this, we have to stir things together. So this is a stirred drink that we have here in a mixing glass with ice and then strain it into a champagne or a coupe glass, garnish with your rosemary sprigs. Let's get right into it then. I have like literally fresh stuff there. It's, it's great, it's great. Um, all right, let's get things started. I'm gonna need myself a shaking container. I got a shaking container. I wonder, with this slightly different angle from before, if I zoom in, yo, welcome to the, the I would say welcome to the party, it's my old thing. So Hacks Food walks into a bar, and I served a Hacks Food in Mold French 75. Welcome, my friend. Welcome, my friend, indeed. Um, you're a good snowflake, so I'm gonna put you on the board. Thank you so much. Who's that? Hacks Food? Dude, I love to hack. Is this like hacks and like, Hacking and slashing, or like hacks as in like you're a hacks or white hat, black hat hacker. Because if you're like an engineer, like programming hacker, person after my own heart, I love that stuff. I'm gonna see, let me see if my zoom function gets how this how this functions now that I have this guy here. This is hmm, nah, there's still some kinks to be worked out there. We'll, we'll mix in the glass first and then we'll get a good view of how things look when we go into the actual champagne flute itself. It's gonna be wonderful. I will need champagne flutes, but not yet. So let's get things started. I'm gonna need myself some ice. I'm gonna get a big old cube from over here and not step on my induction cooker. I definitely, definitely did not just almost do that because that would be dumb and stupid and completely against my own advice. And we don't do that around here, naturally. Ice. Ice, baby. A little cube in there because eventually i want a nice little zoom so that i can like look at the ice like spin in there it's so it's so cool oh my god oh knock my ice over who cares i also have mm, i should probably take the rosemary sprigs that i have literally in the back of my freezer out as well um i didn't get to use them last week so i have to put away that's not that rosemary sprigs oh where are my rosemary sprigs oh there you are way in the back of the freezer on the left hand side I found that it is, this is not, I would not recommend using rosemary that's been frozen. You should probably use fresh rosemary, but I was intended to use these last week. I'll put that on the side. They always remind me of the Tesseract from Marvel. Oh, the, the, the big old ice cubes. Oh, love them. They're, um, they're not clear. They could be clear. And one day maybe they will be. But for now, I'm using my freezer that I bought for 140 bucks. Not freezer, sorry. Mini fridge with a freezer component. I will use that as well. So the first thing that we're gonna need, um, I, I have my own recipe over here. Uh, one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of gin. Um, I love, my friend got for me the botanist gin 
And so every time I am inclined to use gin, I want to go with the botanist gin. It's a really nice gin, but I'm getting to that point in my, it, I'm getting to the point in the bottle where I'm like, ooh, I've used a lot of the really good ingredient, so I'm not going to use the botanist gin. <laughs> Because I don't want to have to buy more about this gin. I want to conserve this for as best as possible. So I'm going to go with this for like a e easy drinking favor gin. Uh, it's it's an easy drinking liqueur made, made not liqueur, liquor that's made right here in Pennsylvania, Keystone State. Just got to boil the water first. Pour in the water. Well, boil the water first, gets out the impurities, and you have to has you also have to freeze it directionally. Meaning, so you have an ice cube and it freezes it from all side. It traps all the other impurities in the center and makes a cloudy center. But if you freeze it from the top down, the ice crystals push the impurities down to the bottom discard the excess water you've got clear ice on top science baby speaking of science let's follow the recipe one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of gin for a mold french 75 why is it mold we changed the recipe a little bit add a little bit of pomegranate juice and made our own not so simple simple syrup just how we do it cap your gin off move on with the next part of the recipe Cocktails are that easy. And the next thing that we'll need is that half an ounce of pomegranate juice, or about 15 milliliters. I don't have freshly squeezed pomegranates. I did try that one time, and it didn't work well for me on stream. I'm not quite ready to go back there again. So I have some Palm Wonderful juice that isn't pure pomegranate either. It's technically got a bit of cherry in it, but you know what? If you won't tell, I won't tell, and I think I think we'll all be okay. I mean, I will tell. Full disclosure. So it's not exactly pomegranate juice. Um, but if we can just like kind of keep the illusion going for a little bit, I think I think it'll benefit all of us. Pomegranate juice, palm wonderful. It's the most wonderful palm in the world. Is it half an ounce? Yeah. It's the most wonderful palm in the world. Dong ding dong. The bottle's really funny shaped and it's kind of tasting great. And it made an appearance on the stream. It's the most wonderful palm. I'll put that back in my fridge. Good stuff. Good palm juice. Good quality palm juice. Wonderful, some would say. Next, we're going to add some freshly squeezed lemon juice. I've got lemons. I've got things to squeeze them with. And I've got a cutting board to cut them on. So really, there is nothing stopping us from having the finest, finest lemon juice. Um, except for the fact that, yeah, that these are lemons from last week, and um, I think they might have been in a freezer for a little bit. That's the only thing stopping us, really. I'm gonna cut this lemon in twine. That doesn't need to be dwelled upon. I'll just do this off the side. Ugh. Is there a sticker on that? No, there is no sticker. Great. And I only need about half an ounce of that. I don't think I need all of the lemon. Oh, I should have did a little dance with the lemon juice first. Why are you not... Oh, I hate you. Oh my god, I don't like this lemon squeezer. Oh, ew. I don't like this at all. I'm gonna show you guys why I don't like this. Wow, I hate I hate this. Well, I'm never using this again. Not for my stuff. Oh, ew. It's like all on the outside. All the holes are on the outside here. It completely misses my measuring majigger. I did not notice that when I bought it. I'm gonna use the other one. Um, because this one works better for my workflow. There we go. I need like half an ounce of that there. Easy, easy money. Easy, easy citrus. Yeah, it's dumb. I know. It's stupid. I hate it. Get it out of here. I don't know if I need to squeeze things anymore. I certainly don't need these seeds, which I'm going to... Yep, totally throw all over my... Yep, there's a <laughs> slippery little seeds. I don't want them. I don't want them. Get them out of here. <laughs> Get them out of here. He doesn't squeeze lemons properly. All right, go... Mm. There. I'll put that there. Uh, don't ruin things, Cam. <laughs> Drill a hole in it. That's, that's a really good idea. Don't you tempt me, Dom. Don't you tempt me. And we'll do it. Next, we're going to need a half an ounce of that mode simple syrup there. It's kind of, kind of hot. So technically, the whole like thermal equilibrium of things is a little off a bit, but that's going to be okay. Um, I wonder how hot it is right now. Let's see. I'm going to bring it back over. See how it tastes. If it's, if it's, like, if it's good enough to, to take a sip of, I kind of want to try it. This pot is, this pot is warm and a little hot to the touch. So let's see, how, what's the best way to, what's the best way to kind of scoop this out of here? So sure, if I strain this, I kind of want to see how much more, how much more flavor it gets, you know? I kind of want to leave it sitting here for a little while longer, but 
we have recipes to move on with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Mm, I guess I'll try to pour it into my uh, measuring majigger and see if that works. Maybe? I don't know. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna try this. I do not know if this will work. If Kratos is the god of war, call me the god of greatest fucking ideas. Oh yes. Very good ideas indeed. Oh, I should probably strain this too. I have solids in there. Grab a strainer. And try to do this with one hand. Carefully. We'll try. We'll try. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's okay. There we go. About half an ounce. That was pretty good. Pretty good pour. Nice. Love to see that. Awesome. And I'll put the rest of my mold simple syrup elsewhere. Um, There was a bunch of stuff that went into that. If you're curious, let me know. Because that recipe is gone. Oh, you know what I could do? Hmm. I wonder if I can have, like, the command specify a number. And we can save what recipes we've done in the stream so far so you can be like what recipe number are we on we're on recipe number two well what was recipe number one and it sends it in chat we're gonna workshop those ideas back in the programming shop take about a half an ounce or 15 milliliters of your mold simple syrup and pour that into here um the remnants that are left behind in my measuring majigger smells super duper fragrant it's a little I, I'll admit, there's something about it that kind of smells a little bit like wet dog, but I don't know which spice that's coming from. Oh my god, that is so good. Wow. Orange. Clove. The cinnamon is actually not as pronounced as I thought it was going to be, but definitely cinnamon, definitely clove. A little bit of that star anise in there, because there's a little like a licorice -y bite to that. Not getting too much of the ginger, but like definitely like the orange sweet mulling spice. That's what I'm getting there. That is... Very, very tasty. I wonder how that would ta taste in like a, a mock Starbucks iced coffee. Where are my paper towels at? I need to put my lemons away. There's the paper towels. Everything's off camera this time. It's okay. We don't mind. I'll be right back. Ha, I'm back. I'm gonna take one half of my lemon, other half of my lemon, give it a little wrap, and put it back in my fridge so I can get more uh, juice later. There we go. And we move on. The next ingredient that we'll need in our mold, French 75, is Prosecco or Champagne, some sort of sparkling wine, whatever you happen to have on hand. I actually have no idea, <clears throat> excuse me, which type I have. I don't know what I used most of during the stream uh, last week because, I'll be honest, I got a bit drunk. I drank a lot more than I usually do, but we were streaming for 24 hours, so I wound up sobering up in the middle of the night and coming back to and being like, what did I do? What cocktails did I make that last night? I had to do a bit of investigation to see what cocktails we made last Friday because I didn't remember what we did after Eric had left. <laughs> it was really funny. But I know there's at least champagne around here, but I wonder if we have some Prosecco left. So let me give that a check. Prosecco? Ah! I found the word Prosecco. Take a look at that. That's got at least two ounces in it. That's gonna be great. I don't need to use the champagne. I'll save that for, for New Year's. I am gonna try to do a New Year's cocktail night tomorrow, uh, next week too, because uh, there's like a, um, I think there's a New Year's, New Year's Eve cocktail competition that's happening this week on Crafted Pour. Um, I'm gonna participate in it. I'm gonna give it a try. Totally understandable. Feeling yourself come out of the feeling of being drunk is a weird experience. Yes, yes, it is. I think it wasn't as pro it wasn't as pronounced because I had a huge meal beforehand and a lot of burritos so well, on friday it wasn't as pro like i guess pronounced as it would be otherwise and i've been really really drunk before like i think i got really really drunk in the morning one time with some with a fraternity event and i sobered up throughout the day and that was weird and then we went to a bar afterwards and got wasted yet again would i do it again not in the same not in the same circumstances that i was in when i did it the first time but maybe one day so we need about two ounces 60 milliliters of Prosecco, some sort of sparkling wine. You could use champagne. You could use like the, the most expensive champagne if you want to. Although when you're, when you're using the ingredients that I got here, I guess you would want to use the f um, really fresh lemon juice. You want to use a very nicely made kind of um, mold, simple syrup, mold, mold simple syrup. I did say that correctly. And um, actual juice from an actual pomegranate. That seems to be the right thing to do. I don't know if this is going to pop. So we're going to try it. No, oh, that didn't pop at all. <laughs> oh, pfft. stupid. How did that make not make a sound? Oh, it fell on my jacket. Usually that stuff makes a sound when I throw it over the bar. Here we go. Kind of like cracking open a soda. There is a little bit of fuzz there. And now it's gone. As quickly as it came, as quickly as it went. 
Sorry, not sorry, but we'll be drinking tomorrow. Or by the way, just Friday, says Dom. Satisfying pop. It was, I wouldn't say, I'd say on the satisfaction scale, a four, I guess. Anyway, we're gonna take our less than satisfying pop. Prosecco, two ounces, 60 milliliters. It's kind of sparkly. I'm gonna let it sit there for a hot second. As the bubbles kind of bubble off so I can measure things properly. Yeah. Just a little bit of patience. Really try to get it all the way up to the top of the measure in the jigger. There we go. Sounded good to Dom. I'm glad that it sounded good to y'all. The microphone picks up things different than my ears do. My ears are like, this microphone is like, oh, you know? I'm gonna save this Prosecco for later. Um, I have like a bunch of these tiny little bottles, so this will probably just be what I kind of sip on after stream is over. That, or if this cocktail is absolutely amazing, we will sit up, we will sip on that too. Oftentimes what I do after the after the uh, cocktail streams are over is I'll wind up raiding Colino, sipping a little bit of drink, working on making sure things are rendered and getting some thumbnail pictures in so that things can be released and properly book kept and stuff. Your drink shows remind me of Steve Irwin skit, skit, skit. If he ran a bar, bear, bar. We can't, t dude, it's okay. We're drunk around here. As you can tell, I have been drinking for the last hour, obviously. So it's reflecting on you, obviously. I think that's pretty much all you need in a mold French 75. So now that we have things in our shaking container here, I'm gonna give it a shake, but no, or <sighs> stir, stir it in the stirring container. Um, I'm also gonna grab myself some glasses as well. So first what I'll do is I'll grab those glasses. I know I got some nice champagne flutes. Not on this side of the bar. It is on the other side of the bar. I'll be back in a second. I'm just moving all around here today. And it's okay. We're taking our time here. Just how it be. My bar's got a lot of really awesome nooks and crannies, so I can do this. Awesome. I'm gonna take these glasses, which I think I got uh, in a thing. When Anna and I went to a bridal show, we won something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll use these ones. This is great. Got two little champagne flutes here. One says groom, one says bride. Uh, if you haven't caught on, if you haven't heard, my fiance and I are getting married, not next year, the year after. We're getting closer, and uh, my God, how crazy it is trying to plan a wedding, but I'm sure it'll all be over, and it will be wonderful, and we will have a ton of fun. But until then, we drink. I'm gonna pop, prop up my sacrificial yoga blocks here after I stir this cocktail up. I'll, I'll stir it off camera, no, that's, that's fine. I need my sacrificial yoga block to make things look good. I have one of them. Where is the other yoga block? Oh, where, oh, where could my yoga block go? Oh, where, oh, where could it be? Where is this thing? Oh my God. I'm losing track of everything this stream. Where are you? Yoga block. Are you on the other side of it? No. Oh my God, where's my yoga block? I use this for propping, propping things up. All right, I guess we're using bar books today. I'll grab this bar book. I'll grab this bar book. And we will try not to make a mess. Oh, I found my yoga block. It was right here below the marshmallows. Haha, -ha, I found it. Gosh. This isn't embarrassing. This is just all part of the show. I promise you that. Put them on top of our yoga blocks. Try not to knock things over because that would also be all a part of the show. It's all it's all a skit, man. It's all just a skit. Give it a little bit of a zoom here. Does that does that do well? Yeah! Oh yeah! Those are beautiful looking glasses. I do not need these bar books anymore. Go over there. Next to the box that I threw down earlier. I'll take this stirring apparatus back here. We'll stir it. You know what? Yeah, you know what? We'll stir it. And then we'll put it up. Boop. Give it a stir. Six to eight seconds. Just about. Your hand gets tired till the sides of the glass get nice and condensed and they look a little chilly. And I think that's been enough time. I don't really know. I'm not a scientist. I'm an engineer. Ooh. Ooh. That's a nice tasting drink. I do say so myself. Take your champagne flutes. Uh, I'm gonna see how far it gets up on one of them. The picture I have showcases two champagne flutes, so I am under the impression that this will give us two distinct glasses. Um, I could be wrong, though. We could be wrong. Let's see how far we get up on the bride. We'll do the bride first, ladies first. You know what they say. Ooh. Okay. 
We got enough for one. Let's see how much the groom gets. That's me. I'm the groom. Gets a little bit left. Now, usually in my relationship, I'm the one who winds up doing most of the drinking. So this is a little backwards. However, we're down with it. We're also going to garnish those to rose with a rosemary sprig or two. I gotta open up my container and put that. These are not very nice looking rosemary sprigs. I, I will admit that. They are not very green. They smell a little weird. And they're oddly, they're oddly segmented. But maybe they'll look nice in the drink. Eek. I'm gonna put one of the big ones in there too. Incredible. Wow, that is. <laughs> That's kind of funny. That is. That is kind of rosemary overkill. Yep, we're gonna do another one. Rosemary overkill. Just put some... Quick, the cocktail doesn't look good. What do we do? Uh, throw some rosemary in it. Oh my gosh, that's great. I present to you all the mold French 75 containing a bunch of ingredients in it. We will go through those. Type exclamation point recipe in chat if you'd like to know what they are and save me from saying it all over again. Which I will more than happily do. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. All right, that's wonderful. Question is, how does it taste? I think that's one of the most important questions when we come to these cocktail streams. It's about how the heck do these things taste? Put these off to the side. Take these yoga blocks away. Eventually, I will also figure out a better way of like propping up the cocktails and stuff because that is also not an exact science. So what we have here is a mold French 75, which uses the following recipe. The recipe is contains one and a half ounces or 44 milliliters of gin, half an ounce or 15 milliliters of pomegranate juice. I use the cherry variety because that's what was available to me. You'll also add lemon juice and mold simple syrup, a recipe that utilizes basically a simple syrup recipe, but it got a, got a ton of other spices in it. It's got clove, it's got star anise in there, it's got clove i said already cinnamon orange peel cardamom there's also cardamom and stuff in there too it's it's just like mold spices if you know mold wine just put that without the wine just water and sugar and that's how you would make it and then you also add two ounces about 60 milliliters of you got champagne prosecco some sort of sparkling wine the original recipe calls for prosecco so that's what i'm using here and then garnish that with as fresh a rosemary sprig as you can gain access to, the freshest one that I had was in my freezer, so that's what we went with. Cheers, y'all. See how it smells? It smells like frozen rosemary, and for reasons I can't quite comprehend. And when you sip it without getting rosemary up your nose, how does it smell? Oh, wow. Prosecco and lemon juice, like that sour, that sour sweetness is like almost perfect. It's like, if you imagine not the flavor green apple, but the sour sweetness of like a green apple Jolly Rancher, that's like the feeling that I'm get back there, like that I get back there. It's not quite, if there was a lemon Jolly Rancher, it's not quite a lemon Jolly Rancher, it's beyond that. I'd say it's more akin to a cherry Jolly Rancher, because I think that's the closest that I'm gonna get in terms of that pomegranate flavor, but it's in a glass and it's liquid, and it's bubbly too. That's really, really nice. I think we're also picking, what else was in there? There was also gin. I just think it makes a nice botanical base. There's nothing really about the gin that's like really, really jumping out at me. It's very, very nice. Oh, you know what? I can also taste the, the mulling spices in there too. It's interesting. I'm not used to the taste of mulled wine in something that's also sour. To me, that like part of my palate um, is like, no, that's not right. You're not supposed to taste mold wine flavor inside of something that's sour, like the lemon, the lemon juice and the pomegranate juice, but it's very tasty. It's not a combo that I'm usually used to. I'm not a big fan of sour things here, sour drinks in general, but this is very, very nice. It's got a nice, it's got a nice sweetness to it, a nice sourness to it. And I think this is something like, so if, you're, if your guests at your party are, I guess, kind of into the mold spices of things. They like the whole fact that it's kind of cinnamony, kind of clovey, kind of like mm, holiday spices and stuff, a little bit of orange zest and whatnot. Then you could serve them this if they're more into sour things. I feel that if my fiance was here tonight, she might actually enjoy this one. Um, although it does have gin in it, which she doesn't like. And it does have quasi champagne in it, Prosecco in this case, which is not champagne, but it's like sweeter and stuff. And she probably wouldn't like that either, but she'd give it a try if she were here. Dom says, those drinks do look good though. Despite the fact that the rosemary has a very dark hue to it. Thank you. I agree. 
I will also say too, fresh rosemary has a wonderful, wonderful smell to it. Frozen rosemary does not. I've learned that today. If I am going to garnish with rosemary springs, I think it like I feel like in some cases you can kind of work it with what you have, but this is a completely different smell, a completely different presentation for rosemary sprigs. I would not recommend doing this. If you got if you got rose like if you really really have to do it, I mean I suppose go for it. Maybe don't keep it in the fridge. Maybe keep it in like like your refrigerator with a little bit of like a like um I don't know if you would use like a moist paper towel or other what. Oh, actually, I wonder. Alexa, how do you preserve rosemary? Rosemary is best stored in the fridge, where it usually will last two weeks. To store, hmm. wrap fresh rosemary in a paper towel, yep. place in a plastic bag, and keep in the refrigerator. Probably what I should have done. I should have just asked Alexa, for Alexa first. Um, by the way, I can't tell. Is that way too loud? It's like across the room. If it's too much, like, we'll, we'll turn it down. Um, I was actually thinking recently, too, I'm trying to kind of optimize on the content flow of things, and I think what I want to do is I want to take my microphone volume and turn it. I want to turn the whole stream up a bit. So I'm actually curious, for those who are on, like, I guess, mobile or desktop, if you feel like answering, there's no pressure to, what volume do you have the stream at right now, and is it comfortable? Like, in terms of, like, it's 0 from 100, because I'm trying to get an idea of, like, where I want to be. Because I found, when I view things on mobile, the volume is really, really low. But if I'm on computer, it's not that bad. And I think, like, if you're too loud, like, people can always turn you down, but if you're not loud enough, people can only turn you up so much. So I think there's some audio engineering that I have to do for these streams, and I appreciate any sort of feedback you have. In any case, I'll continue with cocktails. This is pretty good. I think if I want to enjoy this, I'm going to remove the rosemary from it, because I'm not I'm not a fan of that freezer burnt rosemary. So a little bit of a mistake there, but we learned, and it's all about learning things. I, pr I wonder if there are any other herbs out there that go really, really well, like um, frozen? I assume probably not. I know too, and I don't know if this applies to herbs and stuff, but you can like blanch, you can blanch herbs and keep that color, like like mint. I think if you take mint, you boil it and then throw it in cold water, it'll keep the color. Like it doesn't go away, um, which is something I never tried before. Maybe one day will. Dom says that he's at like 97 on a computer, but when he uses his phone about the same, it's almost at max or something too, but the music is at a good level. Same with the voice. I think, so my logic is if it's at 97 now, I need to increase the volume so that the level is more even. And I will play I will play around with it. I will probably play around with it, not now, but probably into the new year and try to figure out what's a comfortable spot for me and the other content that I want to produce. Um, but as always, feedback is greatly appreciated. So this was a Mold French 75. It was the first, technically, the first cocktail that we made this evening. Technically, we also made, or no, we definitely did make a Mold simple syrup which is not alcoholic you can use this syrup in anything it doesn't have to go in your cocktails it can go into your teas it could be, it could be as a sweetener in like just your water in the morning it could, would be really really great if you try to make like really really awesome coffees with very particular syrups to get a, to evoke a particular like flavor it would probably go well in your iced coffees or warm coffees too i don't know how but we'll see Dom personally got shit hearing, got, has shit hearing, so his opinion on that should not be accepted. My hearing is damaged. I have tinnitus. I went to a lot of rock bands that my father would play when I was younger, and from what everybody else has told me, my hearing is not that good. So I'm probably not a good source on this truth either. But we proceed. And if things don't work, hey, you know what? If shit gets really, really bad, somebody will say something. Like, if something is so bad... I, I personally believe that if you, something is so, so bad that it's unbearable, somebody will say something about it. But alas, there's no obligation there. All right. So the next recipe that I want to dive into is um is a different one that I wasn't able to cover next uh, last week. Um, let's figure out which one we want to do. I think what I want to do is I'm going to do the non-alcoholic one. Um, and it's not... I don't know if it's necessarily a holiday drink, but it is a drink that you would make around this season because it's getting freaking cold outside. And what what's better in the cold than some really nice hot chocolate? This is actually suggested to be done on stream bar buddy Domstar over there, the newly inaugurated mod, because I forgot about it until now. It's Flanders' hot chocolate, which was featured on binging slash cooking with Babish. Uh, I've always wanted to make this recipe because I watch Babish every once in a while, and it's kind of intense and it scared me. I was like, oh my god, like this is gonna be like a really intense recipe but we have time and i want to make sure we put a mocktail on there flanders hot chocolate the recipe can be found on binging with babish which episode 
Google it. It's on there. And it uses a variety of different things, and I will slowly but surely add those to the chat in just a moment. Riceroni says, Happy Christmahana Kwanzist! Ooh, that's, that's more. Christmahana Kwanzulstivist Day. Christmahana Kwanzulstivist Day. Christmahana Kwanzulstivist to this Day. Christmahana Kwanzulstivist to this Day. Because it's Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, the Yuletide, the Solstice, and Festivus. Naturally. I'm so happy that I was able to identify all of those. Or I might I might be wrong on something. I, I shouldn't get so cocky over here. But yes, have a happy, merry, wonderful holidays, aka Christmahana Kwan's Yolstis to this day to everybody. And that is on this on this our Lord's Day, December 14th, 2022, I suppose. Um yeah, so let's let's do this. Here comes the new slow part of the stream where I slowly but surely add the recipe on our next system. There's a lot of ingredients here. I'm not gonna put the measurements here because it's gonna take, I'm actually a little unsure on what the measurements are supposed to be anyway, but I am gonna try my damnedest. If you'll give me a moment, I will add the recipe for Flanders hot chocolate in here. Good job, you got them all right, but forgot day for those that it's just another day. This is also very true, it is also just a red day. For those otherwise, it is December 14th. How's your day going? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spam chat for a moment, um, just because that's that's how I have to that's how I have to do things here. I just set up this bot thing the other night. There'll probably be a better way to do it, but for now, this is what we have. I'm gonna export this recipe so that I have it for later. Export recipe, excellent. I love that. And we're gonna make Flanders hot chocolate. So the recipe is set recipe Flanders hot chocolate. The first ingredient we're going to add is going to be, and I'll do some copying here just so it's easy. We need whole milk. We're also going to add heavy cream. We're gonna add evaporated milk. There's a lot of different types of lactose products in here, which is actually kind of a good thing because my dearest is not here. Milk adding, whoops, I did that wrong. It's okay. It's okay, that's fine. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna keep with it. <laughs> we're gonna need sweetened condensed milk. Condensed milk we're also going to need oh it actually has the ingredients here half a cup of Ghirardelli cocoa powder so I'll do cocoa powder one half a cup of cocoa powder we're also going to add half a cup of 70% dark chocolate I think I was only able to get 60% it's gonna be fine dark chocolates we're gonna add half a cup of sugar sugar We'll also need a small pinch of ground cinnamon, a teaspoon of salt, a, no, a teaspoon of instant coffee, which is optional. I'm gonna do it, I have instant coffee around here somewhere. Teaspoon of instant coffee. Oh my God, it keeps going. Whipped cream on top, naturally. I've got like an almond milk whipped cream. I think it's gonna be good on this. Um, chocolate shavings, naturally. Shavings. One small graham cracker, which I will properly capitalize. I will be leaving. I need to get ready for bed. Dom, you have a wonderful rest of your night. Stay rested, my friends. Stay rested. And one marshmallow. I have like an entire bag of marshmallows out here. And in total, if I type that all correctly, this is our recipe. There it is. I'll spam in chat for everybody to see. Ta-da! Anyways, now that that absolute regurgitation of bot commands is over, I also need to do some other cleanup as well. I need to get my pot. I need to get my pot back, which I need to use with my induction cooker. So I need to take that and put it into a con uh, take my mold simple syrup and put that into a container. I believe I have containers around here somewhere. The question is which container to use and will it be good enough for my particular libation? I have a couple of these back here. I'm gonna grab this flask down here. Oh, come here. Come here, Flasky boy. There we go. Eventually, eventually I will get better at this. I will get better at being able to like conserve all my ingredients and stuff. There's like a big, I got this flask to go to my first fraternity formal. Cause I was like, oh, I'm going to a fraternity formal. I gotta be able to bring my alcohol with me. What if they catch me? I'm underage. Um, I had apple juice in it. I promise. I don't need that yet. I'm gonna put the, the mold simple syrup into this container and hopefully not make a mess. I should have a funnel around here somewhere. I'll be back in the briefest of moments. 
Got my simple syrup. Mold simple syrup. It's um significantly cooled off, which is great. Put these off to the side. I'm just gonna package this up just so I can save it for later. Because it was really, really good. I think genuinely I would want to use this in like coffees and stuff. It's very, very tasty. I'm gonna try to strain up on top as well. I wanna make sure that this doesn't like fall over. That's the best thing that I can do for that. I'm gonna put a stirring glass on one side and my water cup on the other. Just to make sure that this thing doesn't like fall over and spill syrup everywhere. That would be terrible. And I'm also gonna need a strainer. And I know I had a strainer before. It is right here. I was using it to strain some of this stuff off anyways. Let's go for it. And this was this was mold simple. This was mold simple syrup. What an excellent sound that was. My god. Oh my god, what an excellent sound that is. My goodness. I love this sound. This is totally doing it for me. Liquid ASMR. Hashtag it's seriously though. Liquid ASMR. That is just beautiful. It's slowly but surely going in there. Do I have something blocking that? It must be pretty thick. How is the funnel stuck? How is the funnel stuck? The funnel is stuck. I must take something to unstick it. Oh, sorry, microphone. Uh, what do I have to unstick this thing? I have cocktail umbrellas. Stop doing that. There we go. Now you're just taking your time now. Okay, dude, it's like almost completely stopped flowing. What is up with that? Oh, I bet it's pressurized. Ooh, I bet this is pressure happening. Oh my god, it's totally pressure. Oh, there's some cool science stuff going on. I think what's happened is there was air trapped in the bottle, but there is a suction seal happening here. So what I need to do instead is I need to put a straw in it to equalize the pressure. This is so cool. Science, baby. Watch, this is totally gonna work. Oh my god. Whoa. Oh my god. <laughs> that totally worked. But it, but it did not work in the way that I thought it would. That was that pressure thing. I just got syrup all over my fingertips. Wow. <laughs> that was so cool. I love that. This thing is pretty much completely filled. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is grab another container for the rest of this mold spice stuff. That was awesome. Wow, I love science. Grab another container. I got more of them back here. This one I don't think will be as satisfying as the flask in terms of the physics that's going on there, but we're gonna use it. Take that off. Put that in here. Seal this off. You forgot to put your finger on the straw when putting it through the liquid. Yep. You're absolutely right. I totally forgot to do that. Goodness. I was honestly surprised it was gonna work. It was so cool. All right, this is my little flask of mold simple syrup. I'm gonna put that elsewhere. The simple syrup will probably last for like a week or so. So uh, use it before the end of the year. It'll be bad next year. Let's strain out the rest of it because uh, this stuff's good. It's got a very like, it's got an orange zesty flavor. It's got like a nice balance of spices and stuff in it. And I got the recipe from the internet. There we go. That was a lot easier to accomplish. Pretty much practically perfect. Practically perfect. That's great. All right, awesome. Let's take this, put some of my trashy stuff away. Uh, I do need to use this container. I need to, do need to use this pot again because I only have one full metal pot. So I have, to, I have to use it on this and I'm using it for the next recipe as well. Uh, I also might need to go down and like clean my fingers off because I am, I am a sticky, sticky boy right now. Sticky boy indeed. I take our spices and stuff. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Take our spices and stuff and I'm out of here. Take my sticky, sticky thing, sticky umbrella. I'm gonna do a, need a, do a little bit of cleaning, but I think we're gonna be okay. All things considered, I think we're gonna work, it's gonna work out just fine. I need to put a little bit of water in this. We're conserving liquids around here. Conserving, conserving containers around here. So you gotta work with what I've got. So that's what we'll do. A little bit of cleaning. A little bit of cleaning. There's a bunch of like cloves and like anise seeds and stuff like sticking to the walls of the containers. So, I mean, it's probably not a problem in the hot cocoa. 
I'd sure probably go quite well in the hot cocoa, come to think of it, so I'm not going to clean it out too completely. I don't think that it's necessary. All right, let's put that away. And now we're ready for round two. Take my measuring majigger, take my little spill mat here, and put that to the side, because we're going to be using the pot for this one. I will put that near my citrus container. And I think it's going to work out just fine. The induction burner is coming back to make another appearance for this episode. So, uh, I don't know what this thing's name is. I haven't named the induction burner yet. It deserves a name. <clears throat> Excuse me. My goodness. Hmm. Delightful and practically perfect. My hands are also a little sticky, so for, <laughs> please forgive me a moment as I kind of wet my hands down. Great. Hello, one amaretto sour, please. Wait, this isn't my local bar. We could make an amaretto sour. However, however, it doesn't seem very... Actually, if you can convince me that it, uh, an amaretto sour, sour is holiday themed, you might consider it here. But hello, lard by the pound. Lard by the pound. Oh my goodness. I love how disproportionately there are a ton of people who pop into these streams with like food related names and it's probably because we're under food and drink that makes a lot of sense come to think of it i love that is there is there a benefit to buying lard by the, i guess if you use a lot of lard buying by the pound is probably more economically friendly that does actually make a lot of sense in any case so the next recipe that we're making here is flanders hot chocolate popularized on the show the simpsons popularized again with a recipe by babish um I don't remember what Babish's actual name is. I know his name isn't Babish. That's like a stage name. Um, but it was done on Binging with Babish. And that's the recipe I plan on covering because when you're on the holidays, you probably might have some kids running around and not every kid, so to speak, can drink mulled French 75s with champagne and or Prosecco in it. I can though, because I'm not a child. Not legally speaking anyway. Convince you, hmm, let's think about it. We'll think, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. I actually just added two. This is this is actually kind of new. I did a bunch of uh, chat command changes up, change ups last night uh, before the stream started. And I also added a channel point redemption to actually recommend or request cocktails and stuff. Because I saw on some other cocktail channels where people are coming on and being like, yo, I want you to like make this cocktail for us. Either, either by a recipe or kind of like make your own cocktail inspired on stuff. And I really, really liked it. And I think it'd be a really, really cool challenge. So I've added that as a channel point redemption in, in the hopes that maybe we can have entire streams where it's all doing a bunch of cocktails that have been requested and we build things up kind of on our own to kind of get a view of that kind of cocktail mixology process. It sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. I have no idea. Never tried it, but I'm open, I'm open, for, uh, open for new options. So the first thing that we need to do, I, love, I keep doing the snap thing. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's like a nervous tick that I started doing on stream. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add two parts of whole milk, one part heavy cream, and one part of evaporated milk to a saucepan. So it, seems, it says here, I don't have a specific set of measurements for how much of the whole milk goes in there and how much of the other stuff as well. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it in parts of I think we'll do a half. I think what I'll wind up doing is taking this hot cocoa and probably bringing it somewhere for the holiday season anyway, and I think it'll keep for quite a while. So if I have a big old pot full of hot cocoa, I think we'll be just fine. And I do have a measuring cup over here, which I filled with a bunch of dirty bar ingredients. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that. I will fix that so that things aren't as dirty as they were previously. I suffer from a lack of space at this bar. I apologize, it's just how it is. I'm gonna put this over here. It's some spare space that I have protected on the ground with a plastic bag. <laughs> Everything get the, the things we're we're a very pretty happy little mess over here, and um, it's actually getting way too hot to wear the scarf. So, eh, we don't need it anymore. We'll put it on the other side. I don't need that anymore. <laughs> so we need two parts whole milk, one part heavy cream, one part evaporated milk. I'm gonna measure in terms of cups, and I think my base unit will be a single cup. So I'm gonna take two cups of whole milk. I don't actually have whole milk. I don't really drink a lot of whole milk, so I'm gonna get some almond milk, which I hope is upstairs. And if it's not, I gotta run downstairs for it. There is absolutely no whole milk up here. There's no milk at all. I gotta go downstairs for almond milk. If you'll excuse me for just the finest of moments, I'm gonna run to the basement and grab myself some milk or whatever you could call whole milk, at least the closest equivalent in my apartment, and also get a big bat bucket, which I'm going to use for all of my scraps and stuff. Hold for a moment, please enjoy the lo-fi and this beautiful picture of thankness. We're still raising money for the World Central Kitchen. No pressure. Seriously, no pressure. We raised like a thousand dollars already. We're, we're more than past our goal. Went awesome!
back. I have gained a bucket and some oat milk. It's great. It was fun. It was fun. The oat milk was behind an entire pitcher. There's like two liters full of Philadelphia Fish House Punch, which is just a very, very alcoholic brandy punch. It's delicious. Um, we made that last week for a 24-hour stream that we had. It was great. I'm using... Extra creamy original planet oat oat milk. Extra creamy original, an excellent source of calcium and vitamins A and D, 52 fluid ounces, non-GMO project certified. That's what the front container says, because um, I didn't put it on camera, so I felt like reading it to you all. You're welcome. It's fresh, never opened, ultra pasteurized, non-GMO, dairy-free. I don't know. I need two whole cups of that. What that is in, uh, Alexa, what's two cups in liters? Two cups is about 0.473 liters. All right, almost like half a liter. Pretty good. We'll add that to our bin. We'll need it for later. We'll get there, I promise you. Next, I'll need the one part of heavy cream and one part of evaporated milk, which I have in my refrigerator. Amaretto's origin is Italy. Italians celebrate Christmas. A popular Christmas story is the one with Ebenezer Scrooge, who you could say is sour. This seems very holiday-like to me. It does, it does, it does. I will say I love the I I uh, instead of actually making the amaretto sour because I do have a couple of recipes I want to make sure to get this evening I will offer my opinions on it. I love sours. Sours are amazing And I offer you this question when you make your amaretto sours or when you have your bartender make your amaretto sours for you Are you a with egg kind of person or without egg kind of person? And if you want the egg do you do like an egg substitute because I know some people who are like ew ew eggs in my sours No way, but I know a lot more people who are like eggs in the sour all the way Without. I respect that. I respect that. I think previous, I used to make my sours without the egg white, and I missed, I, everyone was talking about this foam that would appear up on top, and I was like, how do I get the foam? What am I doing wrong? And then somebody's like, you have to add the egg white, or like an entire egg if you don't know what you're doing like I am sometimes. And I was like, this is interesting. And it's like, it smooths things out, but I think it doesn't change the taste very much, so I don't think anybody's really missing out, just because I've never had it with. If you're an adventurous kind of person, I would definitely recommend trying it. It is different. It might not be your thing, but I think there's no there's no harm in trying unless you like literally can't have egg, in which case I respect it. I need my heavy cream and evaporated milk. I got that back here. Oh my god, don't make a mess. Oh my lord, I gotta go back downstairs. <laughs> These are totally sealed containers. I need to go get a can opener. I never I didn't even think that I'd need a can opener. Excuse me one moment. I'm gonna run downstairs and get a can opener. I forgot that I was gonna need this. Oh my gosh! Can opener! Can opener. Can opener. And just like that, I was never gone. I'm still here. Don't worry. I have my tenants. Hi there, I never left. Can opener. I need to add one part of the evaporated milk and the um, and the sweetened condensed milk. I think for the most part, these are not specifically required, but they do add like a creaminess to the hot cocoa. It makes it a lot more lactose intense. My fiance couldn't have this stuff, but I can have this stuff. And I've had a hankering for, I, this morning, I had a hankering for a mocha coffee. I got a dark chocolate peppermint mocha from Saxby's and that was, that was okay. It did me well this morning. I don't know if there's even an entire cup in here. Let's see. Um, Alexa, how many ounces are in a cup? One cup is eight fluid ounces. Oh, there is actually more than a cup in here. So I'll measure it out. We'll see what happens. Um, this can opener can be a little wonky. So if it doesn't open properly, um, it's still my fault. I'm gonna try to not make a mess. I've never opened a can up on stream, my god! This is new to me. Oh, it is having a hard, hard time. Can we can we get it? Can we get it? Wow, this is this, this is sucking. This is not working. Uh-oh. Lard by the pound says, so I recently went to a wedding and the after party for non-child having adults was at a bar for non-child having adults. Oh, right, because you'd have to have to watch the children, I assume. And they brewed their own beers. Sour cherry beer was actually heaven in a pint. I think my first sour beer was a sour cherry lager. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was like, I had no idea that it could be this good. 
All right, I am really struggling with this can opener here. My God, what am I doing wrong? What am I, what could I possibly be doing wrong? Hmm. I know that there is a method to do this. The question is, what is that method? I know not. Can Cameron figure out how to use a can opener on stream? The question is not a matter of can he, it's about when will he, because I will figure it out. I feel like I always use can openers wrong. All right, now I got it in there. Can we, can we, can we do it? Oh, mm. sort of kind of getting there. Sort of kind of getting there. Nope. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. Oh, it kind of, ooh, there we go. Nope, it's not working either. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sad. I can't believe this. I cannot believe I'm struggling with this. This is embarrassing. I will admit that. But I will continue on trying as best as I possibly can. For the sake of the hot cocoa, it will happen. Live by the Pound's first beer was a Budweiser. Never had a beer after until the cherry sour one was on the list. Yeah, I was not a big fan of lot. My first beer, I think, was a, I think it was a Bud Light. Not a really big fan of lagers. I've been able to identify now. I'm just not into lagers. Um, that's what I that's what I struggle with. Oh, you know what's wrong with this can opener? I wonder if we can showcase this. I'm gonna I'm gonna defend myself because I'm a prideful person. I'm gonna zoom in on this can opener. It's the can opener's problem. It's not me, it's the can opener. I promise you that. This is my can opener. It is a beautiful, beautiful red can opener. It looks pretty good. However, there are gears on the inside here. And within those gears, they are supposed to turn on each other. However, they slip. The, gear, the gears actually slip there. Oh my God. I'm gonna see if there's another can opener downstairs. If not, I guess we'll have to Google how to open a can without a can opener. This was actually a problem that I faced at my fraternity house when I went back for the Thanksgiving. We were like, we can't open the cans. How do we do it? I was like, can opener. They're like, we don't have a can opener. It's like, oh no. Um, let's brainstorm on that for a moment as I try to see if there's another can opener in the apartment because this one sucks. It's not me, I promise. Ugh. That's just like me to back, grab the wrong can opener. I found another can opener. No worries, no worries. We're back, we found another one. It's better than the first one, can almost guarantee it. It actually works, I promise. I'm still struggling with it. No, what am I doing wrong? No! <laughs> oh my God. Get into the container, please. Into the container, into the container. Now that we've sealed... Oh my gosh. It might actually be me. It might actually be me. I might be the one who's wrong here. Hmm. I might need to look up instructions on how to use a can opener. I, I think I do. Well, this is embarrassing. But you know what? The show must go on. A second choice, says Lard by the Pound, is a cream ale that's only brilled in Wisconsin. That sounds lovely. To be honest, they don't remember the name, only remember that it was delicious, but it's a cream ale in Wisconsin. That is it. I feel like that might narrow it down a little bit. How to use a can opener. <sighs> How does one do it? I am supposed to put it on the side. Place the can on a flat countertop. Spread the arms over the can opener. The wheels that... This separates the sh sharp cutting wheel and the notch feed wheel. Line up the two wheels, squeeze the cans, open arms together. This might be a stream of discovery for me. So I take it here and I take it on like this. And I squeeze inward? No. Here I do it like this. No, that doesn't feel right. Oh, I also has another side of the can opener too. Hmm. Let's see. I need images. I need instruction. Yeah, that's what I was doing, though. I was taking the sharp part, putting it here, and clamping it down. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I see, I see this thing. I see this thing. Wait. There's another little component. I wish I would be able to narrate this better, but I'm not having a very good... I'm not doing very good over here with that. If I angle it properly, and I do it like this, and I pop it, 
that is that working? No, maybe. No, it's not working. <laughs> Speaking of state exclusive drinks, ever had a drink by the name of a Moxie? I've never had a Moxie before. If you wouldn't mind sharing, as I <laughs> as I struggle to get over a freaking can over here, I would greatly appreciate the education. I might actually have to move on from this drink if I can't get this can open. Or we continue. We try our best to go. Go open can. Go open can. I cannot believe this. There must be another way. Related content. You're supposed to spin the thing over top. There's also another option. There is another option. I can use this part of the can opener. I might have to do it this way. I put the thing in. That might have worked. This could work. This could very much work. And I kind of, I kind of saw. Is that what I do with it? Is that working? I don't know. I, I genuinely have no idea. Do I do it the other way? No. Hmm. Could be wrong about this too. I'm going to keep trying this for the next 10 or 15 minutes. So if this is not your thing, go, go grab a cup of coffee or something. Might be here a little while. I am going to do it. I absolutely will. But uh, happy holidays, everybody. Chris Mahana, Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa Kowadl, whatever it was before. Whatever it was that Ricerone said before. Okay. This is a Faberware can opener. I'm going to get scientific about this. It's a Faberware can opener. How to use specifically a Faber Wear can opener. How to use Faber Wear, Faber Wear can opener. This is a common search, apparently. How to use it. Faber Wear, an electric can opener. No, no, no. Safety can opener. How to use. Not that one. Oh, yes, it is this one. Okay. Oh, that's not the right one. That's not the safety, that's not the can opener I have. A moxie is a soda made in Maine. Its slogan is distinctly different. Most people dislike it. Oh wait, I've heard people say it tastes like molasses in a can or medicine. Uh, Lard by the pound disagrees. They both love the drink. Interesting. I feel like I, did they serve that in Disney World in Club Cool? I feel like I've had, maybe I have had moxie before. Does it have a red color? Because if it does, then I might've actually had it. Faberware classic can opener. Nope, that ain't working. Is there a video? Pro 2 can open it. Oh, that's the one! This. Harborware. Please tell me how to do it, Shopping Dragons. So, a lot of people electric can openers, and that's great. No offense, but please get to the point. I need to know how to use the, the can opener. Double. It would be great. It's really easy to use. Is it though? How do? So what you're going to do is you're just going to clamp down. But that's what I've been doing, shopping dragons. And this is easy to operate. But that's what I've done. I gotta try this again. Moxie is a brown drink in an orange can. Okay, I've definitely never had that before. Although if I ever find myself up in Wisconsin, I'm gonna give that a try. Alright, this is absolutely wild. I need to get this thing like moving. Gotta get it moving. How do I get this thing moving? Maybe I need to like grease it up. Maybe I need to get WD-40. Maybe I just have to grease up the can. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. I think I'm going through the stages of grief up here. I, I was in denial. Now I'm trying to bargain with it. I'm trying to bargain with the can opener. If I go that way, maybe I just gotta do it tough and slow. Tough and slow. Tough and slow. Tough and, nope, that didn't work. It doesn't turn that way either. Oh my goodness gracious! Get into the can- I wonder if the evaporated milk one is working better. Oof. Let's try that. I'm gonna try the other can and see if it's better. This is going significantly better than the other can. My god. This could be it. This could be- No! Oh, it's working! Oh, it's working! Discovery with epic saxophone in the background! Oh my god, it's working. Thank you. By the power of Moxie, Maine is a is Moxie, Wisconsin in cream is Maine. Whoa, Maine is Moxie, Wisconsin is cream ale. There's a whole like a uh, transitive property going on there, like in mathematics. That was so easy. 
That was so easy. Whoa, and I made a small bit of a mess. Thank you, Evaporated Milk, for being easy on me, at least. <sighs> One cup of Evaporated Milk. <laughs> or about half a liter. We also need the sweetened condensed milk. We'll get there. We will. Oh my god, we're gonna do it. This is a cause for celebration. Oh my goodness. Alright. Back to the sweetened condensed milk, which I think is optional for this drink. However, I really, really want sweetened condensed milk in this hot chocolate. I'm not even doing this for alcohol at this point. I just realized I made a drink earlier. I could be using this. The Mold French 75. So good. So when you put the can opener in, don't put it in the hole, make a new hole and turn. At least in that way, right? I'll be making a little bit of progress every single time. That is an excellent point there, Lord by the Pound. Excellent po Oh my god, is it working? Okay, well it kind of worked. It is kind of- it's kind of working. It is kind of working now. Wow. By the powers that be, Karma is finally coming back to favor us. Oh, and I got so far with it. Oh, 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 oh my god! I just needed to- I just needed to believe. I just needed to believe. That's all it was. Just a little bit of belief. And it's basically open. Um, yeah. Just need to be a little kind of careful with that. That's it. That's it. We've done it. Thank you, Lord by the Pound. I don't think we could have done this without the help. <laughs> Why is that so difficult to do? Anyway, add a cup of sweetened condensed milk. <laughs> We're back in stream mode. This is... Oh, it's condensed all right. It is a... Whew, that is a goopy, goopy substance. Delicious. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pour all this out, so I'm going to pour a little extra in there. Whoop, okay. Don't make a mess, Camp. That is delicious. My goodness, that tastes delicious. I love the taste of sweetened condensed milk. That is delightful. Do I have like a ladle up here? Something I can use to get all the good bits out? I do not. So I will just use the rest of that later. Some cupcakes or something. Add that to your container of various other lactose products. That is delightful. What a beautiful stream. What a beautiful stream of condensed lactose intense liquid. That was great. Well, congratulations, everybody. We placed three ingredients into a pot. Yay, or it's not a pot, it's a pan, I guess, technically, right? Somebody corrected me about that last time. I can be wrong sometimes. That was incredible. That was so good. That was so good. I'm gonna continue with the rest of the recipe. Anyways, welcome to the bar. Bar spelled with an X, X bar, X-B-A-R, um, where we, we try our best. <laughs> All right, so the next thing that we're gonna need to do is we need to heat the milk and whisk until, it's, until it is heated. I don't have a whisk up here. Oh my gosh. Heat the steaming, but not boiling, and then add all the other stuff to it. What we're gonna do is, I'm gonna gather all of the other ingredients that we need, put them to the side, and then we're gonna heat it up, then I'll go get the whisk, and then we'll do, we'll do it. I also apparently, I definitely need to grab a coffee cup too, otherwise I'd have no proper container to put this into. What is this recipe? It is Flanders hot chocolate from the Simpsons, and that's the recipe. That is the recipe. I think the the whole milk heavy cream, I'm using the whole milk in two cups, the heavy cream and the evaporated, the condensed milk, um, all in one cup increments. So, that's what I plan to do there. Heavy cream, oh, I didn't put the heavy cream in there. I put sweetened condensed milk. I need heavy cream. That's not in a can. This will be much easier to do. I don't know how to have a full cup of that, but we'll, we'll see. We will see. Full cup of heavy cream. Let's see. Does it does it work? Do we have a half a cup in there? Probably. Maybe. This is going to be a lot of liquid. Yep. We got it. There we go. Cocoa. Cocoa. This is what it's all about. Sweet, sweet cocoa. This is going to be very, very sweet. I don't think it can get... I don't think my hot cocoa can get any sweeter than this, to be perfectly honest. 
Okay, we will also need half a cup of cocoa powder. Oh, I'm gonna need this container again. All right, welcome back. I've got some really, really nice cocoa powder, powder up here that the, um, that the, um, got some really nice cocoa powder up here that my fiance got to me from, from Guatemala. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how that tastes. Where's the alcohol? The alcohol is whatever is limited by your imagination. This is a non-alcoholic holiday beverage. That's why it is a beverage instead. But you could probably add alcohol to this. I would specifically think if you wanted to add something really nice to this, instead of one of the various milk ingredients, add like some Godiva dark chocolate in there or Godiva white chocolate, milk chocolate liqueur. That stuff is scrumptious, delicious. Where is my cocoa powder? I found my cocoa powder. It's over here. I need about a half a cup of that. So how will I measure this? What is the best way to measure this? I'll just put it into the measuring container. That seems to be best. It smells chocolatey. It smells really chocolatey. It's very, very good smelling. Would Bailey's work? Absolutely. Yeah, I was just thinking of like chocolate cream liqueurs, but there's nothing stopping you from putting a thing of Bailey's in there. That would be absolutely lovely. I don't usually have a lot of Bailey's in my collection just because I guess I just, I just usually don't go out and buy Bailey's, I guess. I don't have a lot of. I have so many other cream liqueurs that I wind up missing the fact that I can just use like an uh, Irish cream. Like it should. It seems like it should be so obvious, but I don't have any in my collection. But yeah, absolutely. I think of the cream liqueurs that I have in my collection, there's white chocolate liqueur in there. There's white chocolate cream liqueur. There's coffee cream liqueur in there. There's dark chocolate cream liqueur in there. There's pralines and cream liqueur. There's chai cream liqueur. There's mint chocolate chip cream liqueur. But I don't have any Irish cream. There's a gaping hole somewhere in the obvious part of my bar collection. And one day I will be at the liquor store and remember that that gaping hole still exists. But until then, cocoa powder. Equal parts to the cocoa powder that you add, you need 70% of dark baking chocolate. I have a bar of baking chocolate, which I hope is up here somewhere. Baking chocolate? Baking chocolate. Or are you baking chocolate? I know I have you around here somewhere. This would be the most sad thing. I don't know what the- Oh, there's the baking chocolate. Nope, that's a- That is a container of matches. Found the instant coffee, though. Found that. Hmm. Where, where is my chocolate that is used for baking? I found the graham crackers. I found the marshmallows. I found everything else but the baking chocolate. Woo! Ooh, 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 ooh. This has probably been the most poorly executed bar stream I've ever done. It means it can only go up from here. I know that I need to get a whisk, so I'm going to try to find my baking chocolate. What else do we have in here? I saw the whipped cream. We have chocolate that we can use for shaving. There is sugar. There is salt. Is there salt? There's definitely salt up here. Marshmallow and graham cracker. If this is not the last time I have to go downstairs, I'm gonna take a shot. Pick a liquor, any of them. I'll take a shot of any of it if I have it. Where is my chocolate? Damn you, where is my chocolate? You're not in here. I'm double checking up here before I go downstairs. Yep, nope, I'm going for it. Taking a shot of something, I've earned it.
Compton, where are you? Well, Evidently, I can't find the chocolate anywhere, which is shocking because I'm pretty sure I had it last week. I definitely remember being at the store and remembering this bar of chocolate will suffice. Um, so I found other chocolate that will do. We'll do this one. This is also chocolate from Guatemala, but it's, instead of being in powdered form, it is in solid form. And I'm just going to dump all of it in here. This is going to be a damn good thing of hot chocolate if I can't find it. Have you had Smirnoff Peppermint Twist? Not specifically Smirnoff Peppermint Twist. Amaretto is a shot, sounds lovely. I do have, I have Kahlua, Peppermint Bark, and Peppermint Schnapps. I'd also do that. I like the idea of Amaretto. I think we should treat ourselves to that. Amaretto, is, is Amaretto your favorite liqueur? Kind of feels like it is. I might take the good stuff too. Anytime I go with Amaretto, it's a Di Serona Amaretto. Cause my God, this stuff is, Mmm, tasty. By this point, I might have been add some amaretto to the hot cocoa. My shot glasses are on the other side of the bar. My goodness. Maybe if I look at one of the drawers, I didn't check the drawers actually. Does the drawers have any hot chocolate in them? Hot cocoa. Hot chocolate, where are you? Nah, there's no hot cocoa in there. Not this time. It must have fallen or something, or somebody might have eaten it. To be fair, I bought it last week during a 24-hour charity stream that we had, and it's very possible that someone was like, ooh, chocolate, and ate the whole damn thing. Oh well. Amaretto. A lord by the, a lord by the pound was shopping was wondering if they should pick up Smirnoff Peppermint. Ooh. Well, let's see. I've never had Smirnoff Peppermint, but I imagine it's probably going to be similar to like a peppermint schnapp, in the sense that the peppermint is kind of... Actually, I would wonder. Peppermint schnapps to me are very, very sweet. There's a very nice sweetness there that pairs really well with chocolate syrup. To give your friend a haircut, pour peppermint schnapps into their mouth until they say when, and then pour chocolate syrup into their mouth until they say when, with their head over the back of a chair. I don't know if that is the safest way to do it, but that is the way that I've done it. And I assume um, that I guess if it's vodka-based, it could be just as sweet or not as sweet. If the bottle says peppermint liqueur, L-I-Q-E-U-E-R, that it's probably gonna be sugary. If not, it might be just kind of a, like a burning sensation like vodka and alcohol can be, but it'll be more burning, kind of in a minty kind of way. It sounds interesting. I'd go for the plunge. If it were me, I'd go for the plunge. Cheers, everyone. I can't find my chocolate. Uh, may it rest in peace. Oh, that was so worth it. Thank you for participating in the stream. It means a lot to me. Um, so I have this entire container of chocolate here. Where did I put it? Oh, God, don't do this to me. <laughs> Welcome to the party, Lord by the Pound. Where did I put my chocolate? I literally just... Oh, there it is. I found it. I found it. I found the chocolate. Oh, my God. I don't even know how much chocolate there's left in here, but I'm going to use all of it, so... We'll get it tomorrow then. We'll get it tomorrow then. There will always be another day to buy, go to the liquor store and buy more. Okay. Chocolate, chocolate, and chocolate. Add that to your hot chocolate. Kind of makes sense. The next thing you'll add is a half a cup of sugar, which I will put into here. It makes sense. I have some sugar. It is hanging around here. I almost lost, lost that for a moment too. I'm like, I'm losing my head over here. Half a cup of sugar. I'm gonna put that into my container. I'm just gonna mix it all at once move things around we'll also need a pinch of salt some ground cinnamon instant coffee whipped cream and that stuff all goes up on top it's gonna be wonderful consume take a little sip of that drink i will take another sip of this french seven mold se mold french 75 because it is just delightful that hmm. i wouldn't say that that pairs too well with the amaretto shot actually that's one of the really fun parts about 
taking a shot of something and then taking a drink of something that you already have is you kind of get a feel for how those flavors wind up mixing together. And sometimes it's okay. I don't think the amaretto and the mold sour, or the mold kind of sour French 75 goes super duper well together, but could be something worth exploring. Anyway, I'm gonna get this thing a boiling, get this thing a going. I want to do mode number six. I think this is probably going to take a while. I did find my whisk. So I'm gonna get things all mixed around a little bit because the condensed milk has basically completely fallen to the bottom of this pot here. And I do not want it to burn. That would be very, very unfortunate. Be very, very unfortunate indeed. I'm actually really happy that that consumption command didn't wind up making me take e eating something because I don't think I can eat any of the chocolate here. I need all the chocolate. I need all of it. Well, that is delightful looking. I'm gonna put this down here. Mm. Delightful. So let's add to our concoction here. We'll add the smaller ingredients first. The first thing that I'll add is the instant coffee. I got this instant coffee from a convention I went to recently from Many Worlds Tavern is the supplier. And I think they do like a monthly like coffee box service. I had their Tanzanian Sumatra the other day. It was awesome. Super duper tasty. Something is burning. What is burning? Oh, don't burn. That's okay. It's okay. If there's any fires, the fire extinguisher is down the hallway and I have a bunch of water over here. Consumption! What are we doing this time? My cat came to say hi. Here. Put that thing in your mouth. That's from Iris. Thank you, Iris. I'm gonna actually try some of this instant coffee. I'm very, very curious. I'm just kind of bubbling a little bit. I feel a cookage coming on. Smells pretty good. Smells really good. Yeah, there's something burning on the bottom. I don't think I completely cleaned off the um, the induction stove top on the bottom. That's okay. Mmm. Wow, that is delightfully bitter. Wow. That's really good. I'll put that in there. <laughs> Instant coffee. Man, that is awesome. That gave me like a jolt of caffeine just trying it. That was amazing. It was like, it was like having espresso, but like, it was like having solid espresso on your tongue. I'm an espresso, I'm a coffee and espresso kind of person. So that was really, really, really good. I love that. We also need a pinch of salt, you know, a pinch of ground cinnamon in there. I got both of those. I'm gonna leave this on the side. Get a little bit of that. Cinnamon. 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 Seriously? I thought I had ground cinnamon up here. Oh my god, and it took my ground cinnamon from me! This is absolutely insane. I cannot believe how unprepared I am for everything. Maybe this is just how the stream goes going forward. I'm gonna take a cinnamon stick. I'm gonna grate it over top, because at the very least, I can do that. Let's go for it. These cinnamon sticks are from Salon. Oh wow, they are just, they are not being happy. Nope, that is not being happy at all. There we go. Ground cinnamon. Well, that's ground all right. There we go. A pinch of ground cinnamon. Just the way the chef intended. And we also need some salt in there. That is significantly easier to get a handle on. Just a pinch, just a pinch. Delightful. Just a delightful pinch of salt. Something that I think we well deserved at this point. The Navarrete shot was worth it. This is all worth it. Everything's worth it. We also need, we got the pinch of salt, we got the ground cinnamon, we put the instant coffee in there. We just need to combine the sugars and the, co and the chocolates together as well. Have you used the chocolate yet? Not yet, we're getting there. This thing has not yet come to a nice boil. But I think it's time to add the sugar. Take a sip of that drink. Consumption. I'm gonna do water this time. Try a little. Ooh, try a little of the milk. Ooh, that's a good idea. I got, what do I got over here that I can use? Where's my bar spoon? There's my bar spoon. I got a little bit of that in my, in my, um, in my water. That's really good. Wow. The coffee there is really really prevalent the fact that the coffee is so freaking prevalent there actually makes me wonder how the chocolate's gonna do so actually let's let's get into that right put the sugar in there that's all gonna dissolve anyways i'm gonna wind up doing it a little bit slowly because it needs to all incorporate in there that was lovely mm. 
It was really good. I think I got a little bit of the, the cinnamon in there. It's, it was a very, very brittle cinnamon stick, so there's bits of cinnamon in there, but it's Ceylon, C-E-Y-L-O-N cinnamon, which is like, it almost tastes like, like cinnamon big red bubblegum. It's sweet, it's got a slight spiciness to it, and it literally tastes like candy. And that was really good. And you can bite into it, dude. It's so brittle that you can just bite it with your molars in the back. And it tastes amazing. It's almost like chewing the gum, except it's just not as elastic. Very, very, very tasty. I'm going to keep on adding all of my sugars and chocolate. There's a little bit of chocolate in there. Now comes the fun part. Now comes the whole hot chocolate part of the hot chocolate. There's probably a proper technique of whisking. I am not a cook. I would consider that I myself much more of a mixologist than I am a cook. So, if there is a whisking technique out there, somebody must teach me. Alexa, how do you whisk? I don't, I don't think Alexa understood what I was trying to ask there, but that's okay. Maybe next time. Get some more chocolate in there. There was a lot of liquid. There's a lot of liquid. There is more liquid in this pot than I've ever used on stream before. It's a, it's a stream of firsts, really. It is a stream of firsts. And honestly, I think that's a good thing. There will be plenty of hot chocolate afterwards for pretty much everybody. I think after I do this, I will do, let's see, how many more cocktails do I have? I think the rest of the evening is going to be actual alcoholic libations. The question is, which ones remain? Which other ones do I have prepared? I have a, I have two Hanukkah themed cocktails that I could do. One is chocolate based, and one has some very interesting ingredients in it. Kind of got some, got some spicy parsley, and, and, um, oh my god, what's the other thing? Uh, tahini sauce. I'm actually really interested in doing that. But chocolate's on the menu too. You could also technically do both of them. There's nothing that there's nothing telling me that I need to go to bed anytime soon, so we could very well do all of them if we want to. Depends on how we're feeling. And right now, I'm embarrassed, but we're getting there. Show must go on. I used to be a theater performer back in the day. Back in the day, I say. When I was a younger child. When I was still a minor, I was a theater individual. And so I was, I, I prided myself very much on being able to think in the action, do a bit of improv, really catch up for other people's lines and stuff. It was something I think I was really, really good at. Um, I still think I'm pretty good at it. I just don't really do a lot of theater anymore. So I took up live streaming about two years ago. It's fun. Kind of feels like, it, it, it fills the gap in my soul, that theater, or the lack thereof, left behind. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm putting the rest of the stuff in here. It's, it's all going in there. I'm gonna use a little bit of my whisk too to kind of really, really make sure it's all, it's all in. Oh, free up storage. My computer's low on energy safe space. Well, good for you, Microsoft Surface Go. This computer sucks anyway. I hate this computer. It makes me very sad. It makes me sad. And then we also need to have the chocolate in there. So basically, this is just going to be a process of stirring up this chocolate and make sure it all gets to know each other. Eventually, it will come to a very soft boil, and uh, then we'll pour it off. We'll pour it into a coffee mug. I didn't grab the coffee mug! Do I have one around here? I don't. I will need to go and get a coffee mug. You know, it's interesting. Before this stream started, I was like, I prepared all this stuff already. I've, it's all upstairs. Therefore, I won't have to go downstairs at all. But I didn't plan for it. That's okay. I wish I would have done this last week with all the mistakes and stuff. But that is that is going to be okay. Okay, gotta sleep. Larry by the pound. Thank you so much for popping in. We will see you next time, perhaps. And if not, if this is the time that we must pass each other in our travels of life and journey... It was a wonderful one, and I greatly appreciate it. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your night, assuming that it is the night over there, because it is the night over here. All right, let's add the rest of our chocolate. I need the rest of it. Pretty much all the chocolate that I have left, it's going in there. It's all going in. The question is, how much chocolate did I have left? That's an empty container. This is an empty container. However, this, the crux in the middle, oh, eat it. Oh, I'd love to eat this chocolate. Oh, but I only have so much, so little left of it. I'm going to put the chocolate in there. And I'll eat something else. What will I eat? The question is what we will eat. All right. There is no more chocolate. I think I've completely chocolated out this entire apartment. What should I eat? Oh my god, what is there to eat? Ooh, we got a nice boil going on there. Hold on. This must be taken care of immediately. I've got an orange down here. I'm going to take a bite of an orange. That is delightful. 
Oh, we're boiling over. This is not good. Nope, that's that's not good at all. Turn off, please. Nope, turn off. Whoops. All right. Well, camera has officially made a mess. Whoops. And it happened on live camera. There we go. There we go. It happened. I finally made a mistake. I've finally done it. I've finally fucked up on stream. Yes. I knew it was bound to happen. All right. Well, that's how we do it. Okay, cool. Well, I have a hot plate over there. We go get that. We can take care of things around here. Luckily, we've got methods by which to clean things up. I stayed just long enough, dude. A lot of really good things happening on the stream today. A lot of lucky things. Oh, this is wonderful. I don't think I have a very put together hot chocolate, but I do have what one would consider a very hot pot of chocolate. How lovely. I also have a terrible, terrible mess to clean up, but that is okay. That is absolutely okay. I will eventually clean it all up. We'll do a little bit of cleanup over here, and everything's gonna be just fine. On the bright side, I do not plan on, not that I would plan to use the induction burner anymore after this, naturally, because this is, who Nelly? Who Nelly indeed, who is Nelly? I don't even know. I got some, pa I, I kind of want to use paper towels too, but this is really hot. And I don't quite know if I want to use paper towels on something so heated. Heated per se. That was lovely. Thank you all for joining me on this beautiful, beautiful adventure we have here. I think the most important thing for me to do now is unplug this induction burner, get it to a place that's safe to keep around, and then kind of clean up the mess of the bar that's beneath. I think that'll probably be the best idea. I have a couple of towels over here that I'm going to use. I literally just used, I uh, literally just did laundry the other day. So I'm going to take it off the bar, put it to a safer area, kind of put it over in the corner a little bit to kind of let it do its thing. And we do have hot chocolate. So for the most part, the drink can continue. But please give me a moment to do a little bit of cleanup over here. I'm going to take one of my big old towels. On the bright side, I was looking for an excuse to do more laundry. And this will be it. Okay, so I'm going to take this is... This is a hot mess. Oh, it's so sm oh, it's so smoky. That is a hot towel. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, if it's a hot towel, I put it on my face and put a little bit of massage, get my, my massage action on. No, 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 no. Not this time around. I'm actually going to approach from the front. I think it'll be easier to do. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Thank you so much for tuning in to Camera with an X. Uh, we do bar streams on Wednesdays. It's a fun time that we have. Fun, ha fun time indeed. All right, let's take you and put you elsewhere. I'm gonna try to grab the cord as well. I wanna get it in the, get it in the liquid. There we go. Excellent, excellent. A little bit cleaner. I'm actually, my fiance is at home. Otherwise I might've had somebody to help me with this. But alas, I'm alone. That's okay, it just means we had more fun. Things over there, make some space for it. Excellent. I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna let that be. Nothing caught on fire, nothing started cindering. So all in all, I think this is rather successful. So long as we didn't set the bar on fire, I think that's a good thing. I'll do a little bit of cleanup over here. Make sure things are okay. We do have hot cocoa though. We do have hot cocoa. And I'm sure, despite the fact that it's not necessarily completely mixed together, I'm sure it tastes wonderful. There, there's probably enough heat to be able to, con um, to constitute the rest of those ingredients in there. And that's what I plan on doing. I'll move this back over here and continue the whisking process. It is a very, very thick, I will say, you've got evaporated milk in there, you've got condensed milk in there, you've got almond milk in, or oat milk in there. What, what was the other milk that I had? Um, there was heavy cream in there as well. This is a very, very thick, super duper rich hot chocolate, if I've ever thought of it. Um, I can't wait to taste it, actually. And there's a lot of chocolate on there, too. And I think it's more or less completely smooth now. I think there's a couple of little bits in there, but for the most part, I think everything wound up constituting more or less in the, in the ratios that they're supposed to. I definitely did not do it as good as Babish did, but we have it nonetheless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get myself a cup from downstairs, a nice mug that we're going to put it in, and then we're going to finish this off with a little bit of fun garnishing action. And I will be back in a minute. This was that extra time I needed to go downstairs. I took the shot good. I, I, I deserve it. I do. I do, I do, I do. I just need one of the many mugs from downstairs.
And we're back. Downstairs had a wonderful, wonderful smell and air of burnt chocolate. And otherwise, um, it was very, very nice. So now that we've made the Flanders hot chocolate, which I feel actually in very appropriate Simpson style, didn't go all according to plan. Um, that's not the way that the Flanders would do it naturally, but it is the way that I feel like the Simpsons would do it. We need to basically garnish this with whipped cream up on top, shaved chocolate, a graham cracker, and a marshmallow. I have, I may have a little bit of chocolate left. Maybe. It might be a teensy, teensy bit of chocolate left. And if it is, if there is, it's over here somewhere. Nope, I ate it all. There is absolutely no more chocolate in the apartment. I have completely and utterly vacated this apartment of all forms of solid cocoa, which is why, actually, no, no, no. I do have some cocoa powder left. We can use that. It's not quite shaved chocolate, but I would say it's close enough. And it's from Guatemala. So it tastes really, really good. So essentially what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna move this out of the way, prop my, prop my container here up onto some sacrificial yoga blocks so we get a nice, nice view of things as best as we possibly can. Boop, I'm mostly interested to see how the garnish looks. Now right, here we go. I got a nice little Nightmare Before Christmas mug. It's great, it's seasonal, it's wonderful. We'll pour our Flanders hot cocoa in there and then we'll give it a nice garnishing. Excuse me, I'm gonna take my, take my whisk and put it into my, my bucket. Hopefully this doesn't spill everywhere. Wow. The sound that makes as it's coming out of the pot it's so viscous, it is so thick, it's so creamy. You really can't see too much from here. I actually worked on my angle just a little bit and it's not as bad as it was. I think we can see just a little bit of the top there. It's the best that I can pull off right now. I'm gonna grab some whipped cream, put that up on top. We're gonna put some shavings and stuff. It's gonna be epic. Oh my God. This is incredible. I dropped it, oh my God. I found the cocoa. I found it. It was in the refrigerator. I put it in the refrigerator. It was up here the entire time. Well, that just means we get some, get some fresh shaved chocolate right up on top. Awesome. We wind up being blessed in the end anyways. So first, what you gonna do? Take some whipped cream. Just like, just go for it. Okay, how much whipped cream is left in here? I don't know. The folks were using this during Thank Miss as well. Come on. Wow. <laughs> I think y'all ate all my, all my whipped cream. That was insane. Just another mess to clean, clean up. That's okay. We're gonna add some shaved chocolate up on top. I'm gonna use Ghirardelli, 60% 60 60 cocoa. That's what I was supposed to use earlier, but alas, here we are. I gotta like undo this thing. So much effort for chocolate, but it's good chocolate. And thankfully, I know how to use a cheese grater pretty well. Um, apparently a, uh, a can opener I'm not as proficient at, but here we are. Put some shaved chocolate up on top. Am I getting the front? I hope I'm getting the front. Looks like we are. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Absolutely delicious. The next thing we'll add is a graham cracker. I have giant brand graham crackers. I'm gonna stick one up on top and add a marshmallow as well. Fresh container of graham crackers. Pop that sucker open. I'm gonna try to see if I can actually finagle an entire graham cracker. Oh, it actually came in, nope, it's supposed to come in two pieces, right? Two pieces, two whole pieces. Entire graham cracker. Don't spill, don't spill. Wonderful. It's actually kind of difficult to put inside, honestly. It is a thick thing of hot cocoa. Probably tastes great. Put my graham cracker back inside. And now we need a marshmallow, and I have so many marshmallows. Oh, there we go. It's making it all worth it. It is all worth it. Marshmallow up on top. And to be honest, I think that requires more shaved chocolate. 
more more shaped chocolate i say i want more of it more of it please make it all worth it there we go that is probably the most effort that i have put into a non-alcoholic beverage in my life that was insane and it looks compared to my compared to my white shirt not very well contrasted delightful that was absolutely insane wow the <laughs> i couldn't open a can i couldn't find the chocolate i spilled the hot chocolate all over the bar i zoomed out way too much but you know what damn it we have hot coffee hot cocoa <laughs> we have hot cocoa we have it indeed that was wild i'm gonna take my spill mat Put it back on my bar because I think I think it is necessary now. It's definitely necessary after what we've been through already. Mm. Kind of too big. Kind of too big. On the bright side, I think all can all things considered, we have to have streams and or shows like this to realize where things kind of fall a little short. There's something positive that we can gain from this. Absolutely. The positivity of it all is something that I think I found myself very well on. In any case, this was Flanders Hot Cocoa, done in a Simpsons style, I suppose, with a little bit of tomfoolery, a lot of miscalculation, but in the end, I don't know why I'm sipping this drink, we have hot cocoa nonetheless. It is so hot that the whipped cream is just dripping down the sides. Actually, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a photo of this. There's just something magnificent about this, this concoction here. There is just something so magnificent about it. Literally, I, I'm gonna get a video of it just dripping down the sides. It's just like, it's incredible. We made this beautiful monstrosity on stream today. It's wonderful. Oh my God. It's so, it's so beautiful. Anyways, bonus hot cocoa. Um, it is definitely too hot for me to drink. It is really unfortunate that we've come to this point and I have a beverage that is way too hot for me to actually drink because um, it is too hot. I can't drink drinks that are this hot. I'm gonna try though. Oh, wow. Wow, that is a damn good cup of hot cocoa. That is so, I, for some reason was thinking that there wasn't enough chocolate in there, that it wasn't going to be chocolatey enough for all the effort that was put in. It's so chocolatey. It is like, it's almost like somebody is taking a balanced hot Hershey syrup and just like, just coating my whole mouth with it. That is so good. It reminds me of something, it tastes like fudge. It tastes like hot fudge. It's like hot coffee fudge. Hot coffee, my God. It's not the coffee, it's the cocoa. It's like hot cocoa fudge. I don't think I've ever actually had a cup of hot cocoa that tasted fudgy. It's like somebody took a bar of fudge, melted it down, and put it into a liquid form, and then topped it with, with cream, a marshmallow, and a graham cracker. No offense, y'all. I'm gonna enjoy this for a moment. I, <laughs> I think we've collectively suffered enough through it. Damn good marshmallow, too. Wowza. <laughs> the graham cracker is so drippy. It's so... So droopy. This is so good. Wow. Flanders hot chocolate. Ladies, gentlemen, those who fall in between or beyond, just add a shit ton of lactose products to hot chocolate and just add a shit ton of chocolate to hot chocolate. That's how you get it to work. And then top it with whipped cream, more chocolate, cinnamon, gosh, whatever. That is so incredible.
this stream has basically just become become pansexual white man drinks hot cocoa after making a mess. I think I'm okay with that. I am totally okay with that. Anybody out there is curious about how I made the hot cocoa? There's a recipe command. I'll just do it for you. You don't have to put in the effort. I'll do it for you. Everything is everything is okay. That's the recipe. I didn't quite include the fact that the evaporated milk and all that stuff is based off of the based off of a ratio of two cups of the oat milk to one cup of the other milks, the evaporated milk, the sweet condensed milk, and the heavy cream as well. This is delightful. I'm actually like really, I'm, I'm th sitting here now and I'm actually really, like really, really disappointed because I really, really wanted to do this, this libation last week when we had the 24 hour thank my stream. And I feel a little bad that we weren't able to make this. This is amazing. I know two out of the five people who were there would have not have been able to, five people, one, two, three, four, five, six. Two out of the six people that were there probably would not be able to enjoy this. This is really, really good. And I have so much of it left. I'm gonna pack, I'm gonna wind up packing this up and making sure that I bring it home for the holidays. This is great. This is like, I have my youngest brother is super into hot cocoa. He calls it hoka, ho, ho coco, hot cocoa. And like, I feel like he really, really appreciate this. And so I will bring it home for the holidays. In that way, it is a holiday beverage. And I think what I'll do, I'll do one more, I'll do one more libation this evening. One more, one more, uh, and it will be alcoholic, um, I think, right? Is it alcoholic? Let me, let me double check that. I, I could very well be wrong about that too. Would not be surprised I was incorrect about that. The last cocktail that I'm gonna do this evening is, is a Hanukkah themed cocktail called Sababa, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I believe Sababa is the Hebrew word for great or cool in the way that you say it like that. In the sense that when I'm like, yo, that, you did something good, cool, great. That's kind of what the term sababa means. And if I'm pronouncing that a little incorrectly, sincerely apologize there. But this will use a collection of different things. It'll use some white rum, pineapple juice, lime juice. We got all that stuff. Some simple syrup, we got that too. Tahini, which is a sesame seed based sauce and sug, either sug or shug. I think it's pronounced shug, which traditionally is like a spicy parsley based kind of like dressing paste thing. I was not able to find a store-bought version of shug. So the closest thing that I was able to find is spicy parsley. There are multiple different recipes online on how to make your own shug. And I'm sure if you celebrate for Passover or Hanukkah, you probably have a recipe of your own. And I'm very curious about what that recipe is, if you are so willing to share. I'm not gonna be able to make it today, but I'm gonna try to get as close to it as I possibly can, because I wanna make sure we add a little, add a little bit more things other than Christmas into the holiday cocktail stream, the holiday beverages stream. Just feels right that way. I'm gonna need to do a little bit of cleanup around here. Things have gotten just a little bit messy uh, and a little bit of preparation as we move into the next segment here. So if you bear with me, have a little bit of patience, I will greatly appreciate it. And um, I'm gonna keep enjoying this hot cocoa a little bit. It's cooled down to a level where I can actually enjoy it, which is very, very nice. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup here, do a little bit of preparatory work in chat over here to make sure that I get these recipes for later. Make a little bit of space for myself and I'll narrate it as I do it. So I'll export this recipe. So um, this next recipe that we have, um, I'm gonna clear the recipe too, is another reset recipe or clear recipe. I'm not exactly sure, I don't remember. I think it's clear recipe. So the next the next cocktail is called Sababa. Um, set recipe. Sababa is a Hanukkah themed cocktail. We're gonna add a few ingredients there. The ingredients are as follows. We're gonna add one, one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of white rum. We've got some of that around here. We need one and a half tablespoons. Alexa, what's one and a half tablespoons in milliliters? 1.5 teaspoons is about 7.4 milliliters. Uh, nah, I definitely ask for tablespoons, you see? I'll, I'll put it into my Google phone. What is one and a half tablespoons in milliliters? 
There we go. So about 22.18 milliliters. That's about that's about three quarters of an ounce. So I'm gonna just do a little conversion there before I type it into our chat here. Milliliters. About three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of it's pineapple juice. We have the same one and a half tablespoons. It's about it's about three quarters of an ounce. Three quarters of an ounce, about 22 milliliters of lime juice um this recipe says from one lime in particular uh one tablespoon of simple syrup which i guess in this case is going to be about half an ounce i think if i'm doing the conversions correctly in my head i'll do half an ounce or 15 milliliters of simple syrup and we've got some i i don't want to call them weird ingredients they're just different ingredients i've never used tahini or shug. I've never actually heard of shug before uh, I was planning for this stream here, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that sounds. We're going to need a half a tablespoon of tahini, so I think that's just about a quarter of an ounce, or about seven milliliters of your tahini. I've got like a tahini sauce that I'm using. You can home make all of this stuff, and I'm sure if you're a person who like celebrates Passover, Hanukkah, other Jewish holidays predominantly, then you probably have your own recipe for tahini or shug. I'm very, very curious about it if you were willing to share. I have one more ingredient here. And there's one teaspoon of sugar. I'm just gonna like add a little bit of a dash to it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that as, I'll put it in the recipe uh, exactly how it is. One teaspoon of sugar in parentheses. Spicy parsley, spicy parsley. And then we'll also need crushed ice in that. And I don't have any pineapple fronds. You're supposed to garnish this with some pineapple fronds. I don't actually have any pineapple fronds because again, I bought these recipe. I bought the ingredients for these recipes last week, um, and the pineapple that I had frozen and then unfrozen got really, really wilted over the course of the four and a half hours that we were making cocktails or so. So I don't have a fresh pineapple here, unfortunately. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of keep it there spiritually. And I'm not gonna actually. I mean, previously, I would use like pieces of paper to to emulate it. I am not going to do that. Um, but yeah, this is a recipe for sababa, which has a bunch of different stuff in it. Um, if you can garnish it, if you can garnish it, let me let me add the other thing here. Um, if you can garnish with pineapple fronds, you are more than welcome to garnish pineapple fronds, and we'll add that in there. And we shall move on to the crux of the recipe as I do a little bit of cleanup over here. I greatly appreciate everybody's patience. I will be back in just a moment as I kind of get some things together over here. And I believe I have all the ingredients I need. However, I would not be surprised if something else unexpected winds up popping in during stream. Would not be surprised in the least bit. Wouldn't be the first time. I gotta fill up on some water too. That hot cocoa is so, it's got a bit of an aftertaste to it, which is not incredible, it's not unpleasant. It's a very, very nice aftertaste. And if you were to keep on drinking this hot cocoa, it would get even better. Although I kind of am the kind of person where if an aftertaste is not necessarily bad, but pungent, pungent enough to stick around, it, it, it's, a little, it's a little negative to me. I can't like not focus on the aftertaste of whichever ingredient it is in there. And it's probably a particular ingredient that I used that wound up being so, so prominent in the aftertaste that I'm experiencing now. And I'm not exactly surprised about that. That's, that's, that's okay. Um, but it's something that if, if it were me trying to make my own drinks and I'd done it more than once, I'd probably try to avoid it in the future. But it's the first time that I was making that hot cocoa. So all in all, I'd say a pretty, pretty successful first exposure, I would say. Because that was downright delicious. I guess I'll put my hot, my, uh, my chocolate back in my fridge. Actually, I'm going to put it up here. Put it up in my tackle box, which is where I thought it was supposed to be. And that's where I thought it was. But alas. The other things that we've made this evening so far, we had a recipe for mold simple syrup and also a mold French 75, which we made using that mold simple syrup. And we just made the Flanders hot cocoa from The Simpsons. Very, very rich, very, very tasty, absolutely delightful. And I made quite a bit of a mess, probably the worst mess I have made at this bar so far, uh, but no problem. Rain in the holiday season with a little something different, um, like, um, like maybe a cocktail or a beverage that you haven't tried yet. So we're gonna move into it. So the next cocktail that we're gonna make here is uh, is one called sababa. Sababa being the Hebrew word for great, 
or cool in the way that you kind of exclaim it like that if my Google search went correctly before this. Um, so you're gonna add a couple of different things to, is it a cocktail shaker? It is a cocktail shaker filled with ice. I have my cocktail shaker here. I'm not gonna add my ice just yet. I'm gonna, actually no, I do wanna add my ice. I do wanna add my ice now. Usually what I would do is I would wait until the last moment to put my ice into my shaker but i think from doing a little bit of reading recently specifically from dave arnold's liquid intelligence i think what you want to do is you want to have this ice get to a level where it's kind of come to temperature a little bit and so this like condensation that you see on the outside of the ice cube is not present anymore i put that in there i also need two small uh little cubes as well because I think they say, too, if there was a science behind how many cubes you put into your cocktail shaker, it's one large cube uh, and a crushed up large cube, or about two small little cubes that I get, that I have. There's probably more science behind that. I don't exactly know what the science is, but I'm going to have that kind of on the side as I mix in the rest of our ingredients over here. So the first other ingredient that we're going to require is one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of white rum. The only white rum that I have around here is this big old bottle of Bacardi. Um, so I'm gonna use my big old bottle of Bacardi to be able to ease ourselves into another cocktail after the mess that we made earlier. Bacardi's nice for us. I think, I, I don't know what the purpose of, I guess specifically the rum is in this case. I think it's just trying to be more or less a neutral, not super duper flavorful base to everything else that's happening around here. Perhaps there's some sort of like, like really cool play around that happens between let's say the white rum and the other ingredients like the tahini or the shug, but I wouldn't know that personally, but we're gonna try to find out. The next ingredient that we'll need in the cocktail shaker is we're gonna need some pineapple juice, about 22, about um, one and a half tablespoons of that, which translates to just about 22 milliliters or three quarters of an ounce. And so I'll go grab that from my fridge now. If I had the pineapple from last week, what I wanted to do was try and see whether or not I would be able to squeeze the juice out of a pineapple. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to do so because the pineapple is dead. And apparently we went through most of the pineapple juice last week and I don't remember how we did that, but that's fine. In any case, we'll need about three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters in our cocktail shaker. There we go. All right, that's pretty much finished off the, uh, and there's still some more pineapple juice in there. I think that's good. But I'm putting that back in my fridge. Go back for it later. The uh, next cocktail reagent that we'll need, in this case, an ingredients, is one and a half tablespoons or about three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of freshly squeezed lime juice. I do have limes around here and I do plan on squeezing them. They were kind of left over from last week as well, naturally. I think I'll probably need about two of them. And um, in the in the effort to kind of keep things as, as, I guess, kind of regimented as possible, I'm trying to get myself in the motions of doing more preparatory, more, more better, betterer preparatory things for the various ingredients that we use here i want to try to be as least waste at least wasteful as possible so what i what you're recommended to do to get the most juice out of your citrus is to kind of give it a bit of a squeeze and kind of like go like this a little bit to try to release as much juice as possible from the peels this is a very very hard lime so i got to be a little more a little more intense on it kind of on top of my bar um but the other one i have is kind of it's kind of soft it's got a nice softness to it so just kind of doing like this is going to really really help to try to get as much juice out of the lime as possible just so you don't wind up wasting things if you're like super duper affluent and you don't even care about how much lime you're wasting then um i don't know do whatever you want to or if you're forgetful i'm a little forgetful sometimes and it's not the end of the world if you uh if you don't do it i guess perfect there's not there's nothing wrong with doing things imperfectly i i spilled a bunch of hot cocoa on the bar earlier so if if i was the one proclaiming perfection i would be quite the hypocrite and i don't want to be the hypocrite this time around we need about three quarters of an ounce of our lime juice i opened up two limes i don't know if i needed two limes i might have only needed the one. Oh yeah no that this is a this is a juicy juicy lime wow a very very juicy lime my goodness very juicy lime indeed wow we continue man yep that one line that one lime alone gave me three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of lime juice that's incredible i apparently did not need to open the lime at all but i want to conserve it so i want to get a paper towel from off screen over here i'm gonna put it in my freezer because uh, i don't know if i'll be using these next week for our new year's eve cocktail stream we'll see we'll try to see if we use it 
I'll put it in my freezer. Even if it's in the freezer, um, if you kind of take them out a little bit before, it's still going to have use. Uh, it might not make a very good rind if you're zesting with it or if you're trying to garnish with it, but it will still have some of the juice left. Three quarters of an ounce, or about 22 milliliters of freshly squeezed lime juice. We'll also use a tablespoon of simple syrup, which I think translates to about a quarter of an ounce or about seven milliliters. I've got some normal simple syrup in my fridge over here. There's a little bit left over from, I think it was quite a little bit in there. Didn't exactly know where. All of my jars are very precariously placed inside of that refrigerator. I'm very afraid to go in there and reach for a particular bottle. Um, it's not <laughs> it's not very conducive to my workflow. Um, but I have I don't have a lot of space here, so we just do we just do what we can. As any I think as any bartender wind up doing, any mixologist, any anybody, anybody who creates things, you kinda work with the space that you have, and if you really find that the space ain't working, you try to upsize it to make more more efficient use of your space, which uh, I think is something that we can all really get behind. In addition to the simple syrup, we're going to need half a tablespoon, or about um, oh, did I do it? one tablespoon. That should about that about two milliliters, about half an ounce. Oh, I did a quarter of an ounce. I didn't do enough simple syrup. I'm going to add a little bit of a splash in there. I didn't measure that correctly. That's on that's on me. That is totally on me. Just a little little splash. Mm, little splash. There we go. I think that'll make up for the, for the simple syrup in there. My bad. Tilly tilly, my bad. We'll also need a quarter of an ounce of tahini. Tahini is something that I've become more aware of uh, within the last year or so. There's a place in Philadelphia called Goldie, and what Goldie produces are these tahini milkshakes, and it's a milkshake, but it doesn't have any milk in it. The kind of, I guess, creamy nature of the drink is actually from blending up a bunch of sesame seeds, which creates this kind of paste called tahini, it seems. And so when I went to this, when I was looking up cocktails and stuff, and I saw that there's like a tahini like sauce that you can get out there and you could put into a cocktail. I was like, wow, that's so interesting. So I found imported tahini from Krinos, from Giant, ground sesame seeds. And it's got, there's like, it's actually very interesting. So if you think about it, it's a seed. So you can kind of call this sesame butter in a way. And you can kind of see at the top of this container here is an oily, oily layer. And at the bottom of it, there's this kind of this opaque layer so there's an oil up on top that's completely separated from the rest of the seed on the bottom and if you get like if you get various different types of peanut butters like natural peanut butters and stuff you'll notice that there's going to be a sort of light layer of oil up on top just because these seeds naturally these seeds these nuts naturally contain oils to them and it's not it's not a bad thing like at all it's just the it's just a natural part of the process and so I think what I have to do before I put any sort of a mountain here uh, is I kind of got to mix it up a little bit. And luckily, I don't think I plan on using my um, my um, my mixing spoon anymore after this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mixing spoon, which actually needs a little bit of a clean off. It's a it's a little dirty from um, of the engagements of earlier. I'm going to do a little bit of a clean over here with my spare paper towel. There are many 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 paper towels over here. Not paper towels. Sorry. There are many many pat towels around here. Uh, because we try to keep things clean and controlled. So I'm just going to kind of put my bar spoon in there and I'm just going to agitate things a little bit. I don't want just oil and I don't want just paste either. I'm going to try to see if I can get things all nice and mixed up in there. Um, it is basically sesame seed butter. There's, there's a lot of oil in here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to go to the bottom, kind of lift up, try to incorporate as much of this as I possibly can and see where it gets me. Now the ingredient, the uh, recipe that I have here calls for a half a tablespoon of tahini, which I believe was about if one and a half tablespoons was three quarters of an ounce, half a tablespoon is about a quarter of an ounce, which is about seven milliliters or so. So I'm gonna see if I can kind of measure that out into my uh, cocktail on the jigger, and if I'm probably gonna put a little bit more in there because this is more of a viscous liquid than what I'm used to, so it's not all gonna come out of the of uh, of the middle container here. I'll try my bestest. I'm try to put a quarter of an ounce in there, best as I possibly can. That was about an eighth of an ounce, I'd, I'd say. Let's go a little bit further to the top. It's kind of difficult to do. It's not often that I wind up having a container like that that is, this is very, very viscous. Unlike honey. Honey has like, honey's also really viscous. I'd say honey is, mo for the most part, more viscous than this tahini sauce here. Um, however, usually comes with like a pouring spout at the top. This does not, I'm not so lucky to have a pouring spout in this case. 
Anyway, we'll need about a quarter of an ounce, about half a tablespoon, seven milliliters or whatever, of your tahini in cocktail shaker. If this is coming off as unusual to folks, I know for the most part, I, this is the first time I've used tahini in a cocktail or anything that I would use to drink. And it's actually, it's, it's kind of interesting. I'm very, very interested to see how this winds up playing out in the whole grand scheme of the cocktail. Because this is a cocktail, it's got some rum in there. So I'm actually curious to see what this winds up being out the other side. My tahini has served me well. Um, I need to get a paper towel to kind of, I don't need paper towel for this case. Oh, found some more paper towels in between my refrigerator. I'll give this a little bit of a clean before I package it all up and probably use it on some salad that I'm making tomorrow. That will be very, very tasty. I think, actually, I didn't even try this yet. I didn't try it. Oh my God, it's like butter. Oh my God, it's like butter. Peanut butter, but it's sesame butter. Yeah. You ever eaten sesame seeds? Like on a sesame seed bagel or like, a, you know, the bun from like McDonald's and stuff? It's like that, mushed up, but in pasteful form. It's not a super duper, it's not potent, like at all. It is very, very pleasant. I'm really happy that I have this. I've been making, I've been trying to make more sandwiches recently, and I think a tahini sandwich is within my future. Or a tahini and, uh, tahini and jam sandwich. Like peanut butter and jelly, but it's tahini and jelly, T tahini and jam. I think it's, pff, sounds like it would really hit the spot. Um, and I do have some bread left over. I need to go to the store and buy more bread. I will probably do that. All right, so next up, the final ingredient that we need here, aside from your crushed ice and your supposed garnish, if you have the time for the garnish or if you have the garnish, I don't have any pineapple fronds, so I'm not gonna be able to garnish it this time. What I plan on doing at some point is buying a pineapple, chopping off the top of it, and just keeping it in my freezer because then I'll always have fronds to use. They will never go bad. They might turn a little gray, green, um, like a dark green, so there's probably a better way of preserving them. I don't know what that is, and perhaps one day we'll find out. But we need to add a teaspoon of shug, which is spelled Z-H-O-U-G, which traditionally is a spicy parsley-based, I'm just gonna, I've never had it before, so I don't wanna misquote it, so I'll pull it from the internet. We'll see what the Wikipedia has to say. What is shug? Shug is a homemade shug sauce, so okay. Homemade shug sauce as a spicy cilantro kick. Oh, was I saying parsley? Cilantro jalapenos? Oh, interesting. I, I think I was wrong about that. Let's see. What is in Shug sauce? There is no Wikipedia article for Shug. Wikipedia? Shug Wikipedia? Maybe? Oh, sp uh, spelled S-H-U-G. The hot sauce originating in Yemeni cuisine from Yemen. In other countries of the Arabian Peninsula, it is also called Mabouj, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Or Bizbas. Interesting. And apparently, the main ingredients of this uh, is hot peppers, garlic, coriander, and there are various different, there are various different um, uh, variations of this. And I don't think there is just one answer. Actually, it makes me feel a little bit better about what I plan on using for the cocktail so uh, substitute. So, I did not make an authentic shug sauce. However, the closest thing that I was able to get, I saw, oh, it is cilantro. I don't know why I was saying parsley. I was able to find that it is a spicy cilantro sauce. So I kind of went to the store, I got some Hellman's cilantro lime sauce, tried with tacos, fish, and more. It is probably not the best stand-in for shug in this case. It's certainly not, I don't think it's close enough to, let's say a more, I guess, like, I guess, ethnic, like more, like a, like a very ethnic truce here, like a, close to the, what the, I guess, let's say, what a family might have around like Passover and stuff. If I'm even saying that correctly, my vocabulary is not that good on that. So I wouldn't even pretend to know that I know anything about it. I was raised very, very Catholic. I have basically no knowledge about this. Um, I'm gonna try my best here. We need about a teaspoon. And I think that's just a small dash into the cocktail shaker. I probably would also use this on salad dressings as well or anything else that might come into my collection. Did I? I don't know if I need to like take off a little cap. Oh, I need to, I need to take off a little cap. Struggling to open things is, uh, struggling to opening things on this stream today has not been an uncommon occurrence. That is, <laughs> I like to pride myself on the fact that I, um, I'm uh, not super good at what I'm doing around here all the time. I'm just going to take a little bit of this and I'm just going to put a little, little squirt in there. All right. Just a little squirt. I think that's probably all we need. 
I uh, I wonder what this thing tastes like too, because I never tried it. Sour, vinegary. Taste the cilantro on there. It's leafy. And there's also lime in there too. So there's like a sour. That, that sourness is probably coming from a lime there. It's honest. It's a little. It's honestly a little lemony to me, all things considered. So, oh, I see. I'm supposed to. I removed it from the container incorrectly. Probably also something very tasty to go in your salads and stuff. That tastes like an excellent salad dressing. So, anyways, we have our white rum. We've got pineapple juice. We've got lime juice. We've got simple syrup. We've got tahini. We've got sugar and a cocktail shaker. And we're gonna combine these liquid ingredients with my ice cubes, which have kind of been hanging out over here. I'm gonna take the excess water that's collected at the bottom of this as the ice had come to temperature and dump it out into my container over here. I don't want that excess ice. I don't want that excess water. And then pour our liquids into our solids. Give it a shake. We're gonna put this into, what kind of glass do we need? Place it on a shaker, shake briefly until the mixture is chilled, double strain into a rocks glass. So I'm gonna grab a rocks glass out here or something I have equivalent to a rocks glass. It'll be this guy. I'm gonna take my cocktail majigger. I'll put it away. Definitely don't need that anymore. This will be my last cocktail of the evening. I'm gonna take a sip of my super savory, super rich hot cocoa. Wow, that is like sipping fudge. Have you ever had chocolate lava cake? That tastes like chocolate lava cake. Man, that is so good. My God. Anyway, shake this up. Let it slow for a second. And then just go for it. And also need a stringer. I think we're pretty much done shaking it. We don't need any more shakes there. I'm gonna grab my sacrificial yoga box, put my cocktail up on top. Now normally you would um, you would garnish this with some pineapple fronds. I don't have any pineapple fronds, unfortunately. I apologize about that. I'm usually a lot more prepared, but this stream has been a very notable exception to uh, things that we usually do around here. And that's that's not raised up high enough. So I'm gonna grab one of my books, make up the difference a little bit. One of my cocktail books. Boop. There we go. There we go. That looks a lot better now. I move my microphone closer i don't know all right let's see how it looks when i pour it into a glass I, I mean, this thing seems a lot closer to me than usual hmm. it's usually not in the shot like this hmm. all righty then that's okay now that's all shaken give that a strain into our glass i'm gonna try to try to take a bunch of sips of water because i really don't know how this is supposed to taste and i don't think it's gonna go well with chocolate that is a wow that is a very nice, creamy, yellowish color. Looks very, very appetizing. Kind of looks like it's just straight up pineapple juice. That's kind of what it looks like. Doesn't look like there's anything different about that goes on inside of that. That's pretty good. So this is a cocktail called Sababa, meaning great or cool from the Hebrew language, if I Googled correctly. It sounds cool. Looks great. I can't wait to try it. And it's got a couple of different things. And it. it's got some rum in there. It's got some pineapple juice. It's got some sugar in there, which is like a spicy cilantro um, kind of Yemeni sauce um, that comes in a bunch of different forms. It's kind of like it seems like it's kind of like curry in the sense that yeah, there's like a traditional like curry recipe, but like every every area does curry their own way. And actually, it's interesting too. I don't know if that caught in the camera close up there, but there's a bit of a separation layer up on top. I feel like if you put like cilantro flakes up on top i don't have any cilantro unfortunately but i feel like that would go really really well in here um it says that we should top it with crushed ice i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put the crushed ice on it this time actually well hmm. i'm not really feeling the crushed ice today so i'm not gonna do that what the crushed ice ice will do is it'll keep it even more chilled it'll wind up chilling it more over time and diluting it as the crushed ice melts into the the cocktail that you have there i just don't have the i don't have the energy in me to crush ice, so I'm gonna pass on that. I'm gonna pass on that this evening. But this was Sababa. How does it smell? So I was describing before 
about how at a place here in Philadelphia called Goldie, you can go and get a tahini milkshake. It is a sesame seed shake. There's no milk in it, I don't believe. It's completely dairy-free. It smells like this. So the tahini in here smells super duper prevalent. I wonder if it's because maybe there's some separation happening where it hangs up on top, but it really smells like one of those shakes. And there's a little bit in there. I can smell the rum, smell a little bit of the pineapple juice. It's almost, it almost has like a minty smell to it. And maybe that's like the bits of the cilantro sauce coming through or the equivalent that I have with the shub. Ooh, that is very dry. This is a very dry cocktail. It is sour, but it is smooth and it's dry. So I think, I wonder where the dryness is coming through on here. I'm trying to think, what, what ingredient in there was dry? I don't think, I think the sourness is definitely coming from the pineapple juice and lime juice. That makes sense. The dryness might be coming from either the shug or the tahini. The tahini to me wasn't very dry at all. I think it was very good. Although when you do that shaking action to it, there might be some chemistry going on, on the inside that might produce these tannins that kind of bring that sandpaper or taste to your tongue. It's not unpleasant at all. It really does taste like that tahini. That is not a flavor I've had in a cocktail ever before. It really does taste like sesame seed because I've, I've personally had these tahini milkshakes before to these sesame seed shakes and it tastes like that that's that's not gone at all it doesn't get muted by that I'm actually very curious to see how tahini fares in other ingredient combinations personally it's a little too sour for my taste so I'd probably cut out the lime juice in there the pineapple juice is prevalent there I think there's a certain there's a certain like acidicness to the sourness of the lime juice which is a little, it's kind of contrasted against the kind of more sweet tartness of the pineapple juice, if that makes any sense at all. I think, I don't know enough about the taste of cilantro or spicy cilantro in this case to know where that's kind of coming through here, but there is something in there that I can't quite put my finger on, and that might be the, the shug substitute in this case. I'm very curious to see how this would taste if we kind of made our own tahini, if we made our own shug. Um, I don't know anything about that. Maybe we'll, we'll wrap around for that next year um, if we have the pleasure of being able to continue to make cocktails when the end of 2023 comes around. It's something I, uh, I think I look forward to. I have no idea what the situation will be like then. But this is nice. It's almost like... I would have likened this to a sour. Like a sour cocktail, except there's no egg in it. The sourness is all coming from, I guess, the, 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 the foam and the smoothness is coming from the tahini. And the sourness is coming from the lime juice in here. It's very, very good. It's very, very tasty. One last time, I will describe to y'all how to make zababa, which is the recipe that we just covered on here. And I will finally export that recipe for my benefit. Export recipe. But I don't forget it for later. It will be exported to my to, to my Discord channel, so I don't so I don't forget to post those things. I am very very far behind on posting all of those recipes to the Discord server. My bad. Just been very very busy with thank miss and work and all this other stuff. This is really really fun. That was the last cocktail that I planned on making this evening. In total, there were four different libations, four different beverages that we created, um, not counting uh, the water that I am drinking here to stay hydrated, and not counting the mold. Let's see, the mold, mold syrup? I got some mold, mold simple syrup over here. Not mold, mold. It's got a nice, like, kind of orange color to it, so I'll kind of put them on the side over here. <laughs> Excuse me, getting a little reflexy here. So the mold simple syrup combined a bunch of different mold spices together with your classic simple syrup recipe, one-to-one -one ratio. You added orange slices, or orange peels in there. You added cloves in there, cardamom in there, anise seed in there, cinnamon in there, clove in there, a bunch of different spices. <laughs> Excuse me. Bring it up to a boil, bring it on down. Kind of partly a boil. You don't actually boil the thing. You don't want to like boil the shit out of it. And then you take that mold syrup and you add it into a French 75 to make a mold French 75, which in this case uses some gin. It uses some champagne or Prosecco. It uses some pomegranate juice. And you take that mold simple syrup. I think you could combine it with, might've been a little bit of lemon juice. 
I can't exactly remember the recipes off the top of my head. We also made a very, very rich, a very, very thick, a very, very messy hot chocolate recipe. No alcohol in it at all, but you could spike yours up with a bit of like cream liqueur, whether that be a Bailey's Irish cream or a Godiva like chocolate cream. Pretty much I think any cream liqueur would go absolutely excellent in a drink like this, or perhaps like a coffee Amaro. Mr. Black is amazing. There was a little bit of coffee in there, and that used various different types of milk. There was evaporated, there was sweet and condensed, there was, I used some oat milk in there, some heavy cream, there there was also a bunch of different types of chocolate. There was some solid chocolate. There was some cocoa powder. There was some cinnamon in the gra uh, grazed on top. There was, ooh, there was so much stuff there. And at the end, it was beautifully garnished with a bit of whipped cream, a graham cracker, a marshmallow, and some more ground up chocolate on top because it's all about presentation. Well, and I think the recipe is from The Simpsons, but was covered on binging with Babish, and it looked delicious, and it tastes delicious, and it tastes pretty much like the center of a hot lava cake and fudge together. It's delicious. It's amazing. And definitely something that, like, if you got some, like, kids at the holiday get-together and stuff, I don't know if this would, like, jack them up wildly or, like, satisfy them and, like, get them kind of off, like, kind of off your business for a while. I don't know. Be curious to see how that goes. I don't have children, so I wouldn't know. And then the final cocktail that we made, an actual cocktail that has alcohol in it, was Sababa, which is a Heineken-based cocktail that combines, uh, got some tahini sauce in there which is a kind of ground up sesame you got a standard for shug there which is kind of usually it's like a spicy parsley but there's many different ways of going about doing it and it also has some white rum pineapple juice lime juice in there and kind of tastes like a sour like a whiskey sour or a rum sour in this case kind of a, a rum sesame sour if i would call it if i had to put a different name on that i'd call it a rum sesame sour it's very, very tasty. Every cocktail here was nice. They were supposed to be inspired by the holidays. The first one for like mold wine, mold ciders for the for the winter months. The next one was your hot chocolate for the kids all grab, uh, gathering around the fire or the adults as well. It's a very, very good hot cocoa. I would definitely recommend it. When the weather gets cold, you want something warm. And this one will definitely work. And then the last one here is for those who celebrate Hanukkah or uh, those who are not just around the Christmas time. I wanted to put something in there that wasn't like Christiocentric because I know there's a bunch of people out there. Whether you celebrate your Christmas or your Hanukkah, your Kwanzaa, your Festivus, your Solstice, your... There was other stuff in there too. Or rather just the entire month of December is just kind of just another month for you. All things considered, I hope it's a very, very warm month for you and that the end of the year and the beginning of the next year comes in very, very, um, hopefully positively for everybody. It's not, probably not going to be a warm one, but I guess it depends on what side of the world you're on. I'm on the cold side of the world, so uh, that's just kind of what I got to deal with here. In any case, this is the end of the cocktail segment and the end of my stream for this evening. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been this has been a very, very fun time. I think I kind of went a little bit out of my comfort zone today. This is not, there's some recipes that I wasn't necessarily familiar with, and I made a little bit of a mess over here. But all things considered, what came out the other end was uh, some really, really cool drinks. Things that I plan on definitely bringing back to my family, my friends, and whatnot as the holiday season gets a little bit closer. I'll be back one more, two more times this year. Once on Monday for some more games, and once on Wednesday for some New Year's Eve cocktails. I think it'll probably be, hopefully, just a lot of maybe just a lot of champagne and stuff we'll buy like a couple of bottles and we'll just kind of have a good time uh it should be fun in any case thank you all very so much for watching and joining us today hopefully you learned something and if not maybe we'll learn something next time if it is the moonlight where you are may you have a wonderful rest of your night if it is sunlight where you are may you have a wonderful rest of your morning whether it's the dawn or the twilight midnight or otherwise may the party continue next time with some good vibes until then y'all bye